people make jokes about spacing somebody, about shoving somebody out an airlock. I don't think it's funny. <laughs> It is Friday night. This is The Spacing, and I am your host, Tim. I am the culture war realist. I'm a rational individualist. I am the expanded universe absolutist. I am the alpha with nostalgia. I know the lord of the core. I storage in the origin. I know the record like a tech nerd. I've got the hot takes for the bot fix, and most importantly, I am never a victim. And week in and week out, guys, we prove why this is the trailblazing, trend-setting channel. Talking about what matters most in the past, the present, and the future. Share the stream on all platforms. Let's maximize the chat. Let's break the record tonight. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk about some topics. You've seen the thumbnail. You've seen the description. Some other stuff has happened. There's some drama out there going on. We're going to talk about it all. And it's going to be fun. Let's see who we have with us tonight as people continue to filter in. The Fractured Filter. The Replay Man in the house every single week. Smash the like button, guys. Hit the like button. Like last night, Rhino had 50-something watching, and it was like on 39 likes. Show up, hit the like. That should be the first thing you do. Log into another account. Hit the like again. We welcome that. Admiral Screed is in the house with greetings from the Empire. Darth Spamton, the retweeting guy, is in the house. Corey Cochran. The music sharing man is in the house. The Sentinels here, highly active on Twitter over the last week. Ah, they're not a pain. They need to be a source for entertainment, my friend. Blake St. Clair in the house, reminding everyone to hit the like button and do it. Right off the bat, our good friend from Down Under, Lethal Lightning for $5 Australian, Dan Blackroyd 2, blacker than the Dan of old blackening, is a cultural reset and $1 billion. I assume box office opening weekend, Space Daddy Tim, space them all, space them out, space all of them. Wrong. Thank you very much, Lethal. And I heard a rumor that, and I think it was a mistaken rumor, that you were going to have Angela White on. If that ever happens, if you're still listening, let me know how much I need to pay to get in on that. That'd be awesome. Rebel Scum is here. Always showing up. If not showing up, he watches the replay. Fuck Norris, member of the channel, in the house. Private Eye, in retrospectiva, saying hello there. Our friend from South America. Jorge Lucas is in the house. Ray sucks. Race sucks, but we'd accept a movie if the movie was good with her, right? Isn't that the take? Am I wrong? Tehalim29 is here. E. Clay Thomason, member of the channel in the house. 
OG Star Wars, member of the channel, top tier member of the channel, and future panelist tonight. Broba Fett, Northern California brother is here. The Listening Fett, a.k.a. Darth Side, Red Hoodwinked, Die Ghostfish, haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for coming back. Zahn's always been pretty eh, all right, whichever continuity they pay me. I'll make my own little pocket story whichever way. Yeah. But, you know, we'll we'll talk more about that. But definitely some hypocrisy on his part. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Somebody said that, like, in the chat last week. And I went on for 20 minutes about it. Because I'm going to say early, but not, like, most recent. But early work. From her is top notch. Call it into existence. Yeah. Will it into existence. Jackson Agaden is in the house. Share the stream out there, guys. Let's get this thing full. So... Anyone going to see Return of the Jedi? I am, but guess what? I'm going to go downstairs to my living room to see it. On 85-inch television, unaltered version. I'm not going to go to the theater and give Disney money to see whichever latest special edition version they have out there. It's not going to happen. It's a trap guys. It's a trap to try to get you to spend money with Disney. And it's not going to happen. It's a truth bomb. And I know people don't want to hear that, but you're not helping anything by going to the theater to see Return of the Jedi. Disney version. You're just not. I wish it were different. I wish the property property had never been sold. And they were going to have a screening. I wish the 3D versions had been finished. They only did the Phantom Menace. But they weren't. It's owned by a different company now. We're going to get into that later. So I hope you're not going. What do you mean they're getting? Like, yeah, it's it's happening. Yeah, but, like, you could do that, but I hate that version anyway. Like, some people will say, no, I don't care about giving Disney money, but I don't want to see that version. Like, okay, whatever. I just, I don't have any interest. I saw it, like, 13 times in the theater in 1983. And I remember it. I remember every instance of it. I was with a different group of people or a different person every single time. And I remember the aura of being there, of having the program in my hands. I wish I still had that program, but I don't. Um, Sentinel says that fucker who wants to get Star Wars fans on his show that think Disney is fucking up. He's just a pure... Well, there's, there's a a gimmick account that keeps replying to people. So I don't know if you're talking about the gimmick account or the real one, but either way, yeah, I, you know, I don't get a good vibe from that person. I'm not big on streaming with other people, whether it's they're on my channel or I'm on theirs. I'm just not, I don't have a lot of time. Number one, number two, you get into these gotcha situations. I, I just don't see the point. Our platform is here, right? Where we, can make the points we want to make. I don't need to go on someone else's channel and debate them. Debates are, are worthless anyway. It's more about who's the better skilled debater than it is about the actual facts. You can debate somebody on tweets and, and videos and that type of stuff where you have more time to put your arguments together, but on the fly type stuff, it shows who's better, like, at actual debate, like the process, not so much whether or not your stance is correct. 
I have no interest. None. That's why I replied the way that I did. Like, it's a trap argument. Like, oh, what do we do to fix it? And we're going to get into that later. I wanted to bring that up since that tweet was out there. How do you fix it? You don't fix it because it's not fixable. It needs to be destroyed and then eventually the original restored, if that ever happens. Uh, Timon from Brazil is in the house. Well, what he said, that was the gimmick account. There's, because it was stuttering whoever, there's a sputtering one that's a gimmick account that keeps replying to people. So be careful there. Either way, I don't trust the real guy either. Just, I don't have any interest. Have I heard of Project 4K, 77, 80, and 83? No, I mean, I've got the 2006 DVDs that are not high definition restorations, but it's fine because I grew up with the VHSs, which were not really great uh, in terms of picture, but they were what they were. I have the 2006 versions of the DVDs. That's what I watch. But I, I think I've heard of that project or similar ones. I just don't own them, nor have I ever seen them. Justin, Star Wars Marvel purist in the house. Don't like supporting Disney, but no way I'm missing a theatrical release. Well, you know, like, I don't understand the interest, though. Is it because it's on a big screen? buy a projector for a couple hundred bucks and you can like watch any star wars movie anytime you want on the big screen is it because you want to be around other people i don't know but not going to do it sorry when am i going on fnt um Whenever I have something big to promote, I'll be ready. Maybe a year from now, I'll have something big to promote. And that'll be a great platform to say, hey, sub up, subscribe. And then if I have like, you know, an Indiegogo or something going, then back it, right? That's when I'll be ready. Dark side. Well, I don't I I don't even know who he is. I have no idea, but I just don't trust those kinds of situations and it's always a losing proposition. Like if you want to know what my opinions are on Disney Star Wars, you have my channel, right? Plenty of videos and live streams to look at. I just I don't see the point in doing that. But I will say this, multiple people Tagging me in the replies, that's that's pretty gratifying to see people do that. So thanks to everyone who did that. Yeah, you'd be good at it too, you know, having those discussions. But, you know, what's, what's the point? We talk about it here, you know, we're watching this show. Like he could EFAP one of my videos, right? I have no problem with that. Vosh did it. Vosh the communist that hasn't taken a bath in three months. Yeah, it would be awesome. But, you know, it's it's pretty cool because you think about situations where you get invited on to channels like uh, three years ago. Everyone is reading like on their live streams and videos like, hey, we're going to 
go over this bounding into comics article, right? That's what we're going to do. It's a thing to do. And then you get invited to be on their channel, you know, a couple of times and great guys, nice guys. Uh, I like them a lot. That's pretty nice to get invited onto those channels and stuff. So great experience the last three years for sure. I mean, just, you know, I can't go on enough. Like John Trent, nice guy. Like he's a guy that, you know, you could just trust and stuff. I could tell I've talked to him, obviously, plenty. Um, they interviewed DSP. What's DSP? Don St. Pierre. I, I can't think of what that is. What tweet is that? Tell us what tweet you're talking about. It's Timbo Slice. Remember Kimbo Slice when he got knocked out by Seth Petroselli? Like the skinny white boy. And he knocked out Kimbo Slice. That was about 15 years ago. Almost exactly 15. On network television, if I, if I remember correctly, like Fox Network or whatever. Drunken Peasants. Yeah, but, oh, you know, I guess I should bring this up. But that one guy, um, I can't think of his name, like Slade. I had to quote tweet their article because he did this big article on, hey, they've, they've uh, you know, done the Disney treatment or whatever to Mon Mothma. It's like, dude, all that information is from, like, the Force Awakens tie-in material where basically – they revealed at the time in reference books and whatever, maybe even Cuck Wendig's books that, oh, Disney Mon Mothma became a pacifist and she demilitarized the New Republic and, you know, made her an idiot and a terrible person. So this new book that they're talking about, some Disney Star Wars reference book, just references that, what had already come before. It was already a thing. Eight years ago. So you got to be careful when you're uh, writing articles and criticizing stuff because you don't want to look like you don't know what you're talking about because that hurts. That hurts the side. Dark side Phil. Oh, okay. I'm glad they were fair to dark side Phil. <laughs> On cam. Yeah, I think I think uh, I remember hearing about that. I think somebody had showed me a clip backstage before. Yeah, they just want to catch you saying something. I, I Again, I don't know the guy, but I'm just, that's the whole point. I don't know the guy and I don't have time. I'm just not interested. Yeah, Cuck, Win, Cuck Wendig is... He is talentless. Those books, I flipped through them. I think some of the people here, I think Greg might have read the first one because everyone's like, yay, you know, new story starting, whatever. And people bought that first book and it was horrible. And yeah, not only is he not a good writer, but he is a piece of shit personally. I've done a pretty good impression every now and then of George. It's been a while, though. It's been a while. All right. It's time to check out the briefing, guys. We're going to talk about what we're going to talk about tonight. All right, so Benedict Zonald. I'm not going to go into it right now, but you're going to want to hear this. I haven't read the interview. I'm going to go in blind. 
because I wanted to kind of do this on the fly. I didn't want to have pre-planned ideas of what I was going to say. We're going to talk about the FCU. This article came out. The Furloney Cinematic Universe. A couple of shit, absolute dog shit articles I found on Star Wars. One of them by the mainstream media. Just horrible. We've kind of already covered Return of the Jedi and unpopular opinion, but also a truth bomb. I want to get the panel's opinions on that. And then we're going to talk a little bit of Scar Jo and Gwenpa. What did they say about Marvel? Which is, is fucking dead. The MCU is dead. It has been for quite some time now. Guardians of the Galaxy dead on arrival, guaranteed. Just what an utter failure in turn of events it was five, six years ago with that whole enterprise. I was telling somebody earlier today about, or I think it was yesterday, about Iron Man 1. I remember vaguely being aware that it was being developed and then all of a sudden it's out it's not like i was following the release date but it was out and it's like hey it's a friday night gonna go see it had to sit in the front row it was so packed and it was a great flick right and you're like wow i'm on board for this and then slowly they're building up the connections all that stuff um the first avengers movie and then it keeps going well I didn't even get to, I always forget the names of these, like the first part of the finale. Um, not obviously not end game, but the first part of it, right? Like whatever that was, even by then I was kind of checked out because, okay, let's shoehorn in Captain Marvel, which I haven't seen. Didn't see at the time, haven't seen to this date. I'm like, I'm going to skip that. And went into, again, no one has replied yet in the chat, but whatever the first part was. And yeah, it was pretty enjoyable experience, but you're you're just Infinity War things. You're kind of not caring. You're just like, okay, I'm here for the finale. Let's see what happens, you know? And it was enjoyable, like, yay. Then you see Endgame, which a lot of people bitched about it, but it, it wasn't that bad. And it's like, all right, that's a halfway decent send-off. It's over. But it wasn't over, was it? But I think it, it ended way before that. I haven't pinpointed when, but I think it definitely did. When people started wanting it just to be over with, it had been 10 years or more. So... We're going to talk a little bit about what they said about their participation in the Marvel Universe and give our opinion on whether or not what they're saying is bullshit or not. Jeff Bridges, yeah. Penis Wars. Wow. Yeah, I mean... We'll have to get Blake's opinion on that, but definitely kind of silly. I mean, the idea of it, like, hey, they're going to do Civil War, right? Because Civil War, the comic crossover event, pretty cool at the time. They did some innovative stuff. And that was, like, really one of the original memes Back in the day when Civil War was out, it's like, Civil War, I'm with whatever. And people would apply it to politics and all kinds of other stuff. That was like a early meme. Read read about the history of memes sometime, guys. There's probably like a Wikipedia page for it. It's really interesting. Um, Twenty eighteen, huh? Okay. I ought to check into that, see if it really was like Civil War or not. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, now it is for sure. But when did it start being a mess? We'll we'll talk about it more. When Stan Lee died, okay, that's I don't know. I mean, you know, how involved was he at his age and stuff? Swinging huge, throbbing cocks around. Don't we all do that every weekend? So anyway, that is the briefing. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, let's see if I have anything else here to share. Before we get into bringing the guests in. So this came out at some point since I logged off of my computer last night until I got home from work. And it's all these stories have been leading to this, but Damon, uh, Damon Lindelof, Star Wars exit, I was asked to leave. And this is from Variety. Damon Lindelof's exit from Star Wars universe was not mutual decision. Writer confirmed in a new Esquire interview. He says, I was in more than talks to join the Star Wars universe. I joined the Star Wars universe and I was asked to leave. I wish them all the best of luck. That crazy psycho bitch that Rhino covered last night is an incredible director. And I can't wait to see what she comes up with. Will I get back in line outside the club and try to get in again? Get back in again? Absolutely. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Or again, again, try, as Yoda would say. Har, har, har. It's like, dude, you got cucked out because they wanted to bring in some woke diversity hire. And now you're saying that you want to line up again? But then, you know, we heard rumors that, oh, they kicked him out because he didn't want, you know, he didn't want to use Ray. He must be anti-woke. He just got cucked out. And then he's saying he's going to line up for more. So it's almost like he's sitting in the chair in the corner with his limp dick, watching his wife get nailed by one guy, and then he wants the next guy to come in. Not an ally. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Helicopter for the win. Big deck party. Every, I don't have a deck anymore. I have a patio. Get it right. Oh, Steven Salcedo's film and gaming blogosphere is in the house saying, hey, yo. Damon Lindell leave <laughs> juicy fruits in the house with the Josie Smollett avatar. Picard face palm riff Magos member of the channel is in the house. Nikki Nikki who once called for me to run for president is in the house. The lady with a very nice voice is in the house. Um, Jackson get in. Why do you think? She only goes for L's. Hmm. Bending over for the mouse. You'll do his wife for him. All right, let's see. Let's see what she looks like. Damon. I'm assuming that he's not that way, if you know what I mean. Let's see. Wife. Okay, Heidi Fusion. Um, all right, let me share this image over here. Let me copy this. Let me hop over here to Brave. <clears throat> I mean, maybe you get like a gilf vibe. She definitely looks old enough to be his older sister or even his his mother, which is, you know, it's quite possible that she is that much older than he is. 
<laughs> Lethal Lightning always with the uh, zingers. Equally Thomas and the plot for this movie sucks anyway. I I have no idea what it was. Ray's coming back, I guess, you know. But that guy is not a guy that would be against raids. It's because they realize that, uh oh, we're going to get canceled for not having enough diversity hires making movies. Crimson Mist is in the house. Then again, anyone associated with Bad Robot Secret Hideout should not be anywhere near an intellectual property because they have the opposite of the Midas touch. And is the Midas touch even good? I've never been touched for the, by them, so I couldn't tell you. Well, it was a wet Friday here. And you can interpret that any way you want. <laughs> Bob says, I'm sure you would. Lethal. Am I going to be in, in Melvin's community stream? You know, I told him that I need to make one. But it, it needs to be late because my Saturdays are consumed by outside work. I have a lot of landscaping and, and other projects to get done at the house, the, the new house, newer house, I should say. So if it happened like at 9, 9 30, 10 o'clock central, I could, but I'll, I'll reach out to him and find out what time it, it's going to be and try to pop on. I haven't been able to to this point, but I definitely want to. You know, we've obviously streamed together before, streamed with uh, Mansplain before, but it would be fun to get on there at some point. I'll, I'll definitely aim for it. First, first I've seen her. So that was like a blind statement. You know, it could have been like Lizzo or something like that. Lethal. So, oh yeah, I've seen a lot worse. I won't say I've done a lot worse, but I probably have. Kind of looks like a dude. Huh, okay. It's almost like they're brother and sister. Which is kind of weird. That's that's a woman. He's got the Midas touch, but he touched it too much. Hey, gold member. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I did come across that when I was researching topics to talk about. The plot was supposed to be Grandmother Ray training young Jedi girls. I did see that somewhere. I can't remember the original source, though. Melissa Lord, first ever member of the channel in the house. Keely Chow's here. Nitrium is here. Sith Assassin Atrela is in the house. So anyway, I saw that story and I just wanted to point out that, you know, some people were out there saying that, oh, he got fired because he didn't want to use Ray. Yeah, I'm sure that's the reason, guys. I'm sure that's the reason when, you know, he's sitting there saying, oh, yeah, I think that uh, I, I think that the the weirdo that's going to take my place. We'll, we'll make a great movie and I'll get in line again. I'll, I'll gladly get in line again to get screwed in the ass again, guys. No problem at all. Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy will do a great job. She's a, she's so diverse and, you know, she's a woman and she's a person of color. She'll do a great job. That's who you're saying is like, some kind of ally. You out of your minds.
What? 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 What voice are you talking about? Are you talking about this voice where I'm I'm pictured right next to Ray and I didn't want to write for Ray, but you know, I did anyway because Disney told me to pack it in. It's more like tuck it in. He's a tucker. Promenade, old Dan Tucker. It's promenade, old Damon Lindelof. It doesn't exactly rhyme, does it? All right, that's enough of that. Just a little story I found. Nothing major, nothing surprising. But... In other news... Hey, what's up? What is that shirt? This is from 19K Fox, and it was one of his um, channel shirts. It says, not my Luke. Wow. Go ahead and just put myself right there. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, not my not, Luke. And whose shirt is that? 19K Fox had this when he first, like when, um, when he used to sit down and have his, um, I forgot the name of it, but... Um, the type of live chat and stuff like that. And so that was a promotion of not supporting the Luke Skywalker that's being created in Disney Star Wars. That's awesome. So you have merch too, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, you don't post the link enough. You should post the link here. But, you know, here's what I said like a year ago. I kept on like moving the goalpost. I said, okay, I get to 2000 subs. I'll make uh -huh. a few merch things. And now I'm like, no, nah, wait till I get to three, because I think what it is, I have the fear that, you know, no one will buy anything. Um, and you have to be really careful. Like, what are you going to put out there? What's marketable? Mm -hmm. What would people right. like actually want to wear? Um, so yeah. anyway, it's, it's, it's something I'm thinking about, but I, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I I, I don't have just that much do confidence. Because I so. will buy I will buy friggin' leggings and use them and wear them to class. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Yeah, you you need to like you know I try to use my art I um and concepts from that. Yeah. And um, and so there are people that do buy. It's not like as frequent as I want. If I do promote a lot more, I probably get more hits but I don't. So that's my thing is I keep forgetting to promote it. So, yeah. No, that's a good, yeah. that's a good shirt. We like it. We yeah. like it a lot. Well, um, see, the reason why I wore this too is because that stupid Ryan Johnson quote has been streaming out there on Twitter, social media, mm -hmm. and then other talks about um, Luke and the rumors about like Luke not being used in Disney Star Wars completely ignored now is what's going on people are talking more and more about the Luke that was created in Disney being better than what the Luke was created in the original lore and all that shit talk is going around. So might as well mm -hmm. represent right now since that's, there you go. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is not the Luke. This is not the Luke that you guys want. Yeah. It's like, remember that dinosaurs, dinosaur show, not the mama. Yeah. Not the mama, not the Luke. It's not the Luke. <laughs> not the Luke. Yeah. So, yeah, so I figured, why not represent? So, thank you, 19K Fox. I love my T-shirt. Yeah, I think, I've, I think I've seen that account out there in the past, for mm -hmm. sure. Maybe yeah. in your chat. It's, it's mm -hmm. hard to keep up with, you know, a lot of the accounts. Mm -hmm. But the other guest is in the back, so Woo! I guess we'll let him in. We don't serve their kind here. <laughs> What is going on, Greg? Hello there. So, 
Alora, you said that if he makes leggings, you'll wear them to your <laughs> yoga class, correct? Yes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> What's that? Tim, your logo. Uh -huh. with, which no, is hold on. Hold on. A target with little hands in the middle, right in the crotch, <laughs> and right no. in the ass. I knew that was coming. I knew that. No, was but the one that the one that I made, like a you know, on a website that showed some chick stretching and all that. It was the EU elitist one. Mm -hmm. But the where was the finger? <laughs> it, it wasn't uh it wasn't the open airlock policy one but there's also expanded uh, i think university the open one. airlock policy one would look fantastic like i said right in the crotch <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot you like i want to see that and i want to see certain poses no <laughs> we have to post the pictures <laughs> Blake says he's not going to give the hands until he hears the chant, and I glossed over it. So here we have with us the Grand High Priest, Holy Order of the Jab, Greg. <laughs> got melissa we can get <laughs> trailer to do it we can get uh we can get uh we can get a rhetorical thrill to do it we can get yeah there let's we do this yeah. we can get me to do it i'll do it i mean <laughs> just imagine the hands right there over your crotch over your neck. <laughs> thanks greg appreciate it hey i'm the idea man Mm -hmm. it's holding that, the that merchandise up. is fucking gold <laughs> that is better than sweatpants with the word juicy written over the ass yeah. juicy remember that song called juicy fruit yeah it's yeah. from the uh late 70s yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what i thought of juicy dun, 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 dun. Are, yep and uh big papa you he sampled it remember yep <laughs> whatever his name was the notorious big yeah if you have black shirts i'm in well um let me show you something so for like the podcast right not just the videos but the podcast for um expanded university i reversed the image so it's black and this is what it looks like you guys have seen it like on thumbnails and stuff so that's that's for the podcast not like the videos and and other stuff so you know that's kind of cool i don't know i got Again, another I idea for a shirt yes Just the black fire away. um huh can make a make a shirt for the disney shells and it can be a shirt that's black light. So when under black light, it lights up like a CSI episode of like splotches <laughs> all over. Wow. <laughs> Tim will do it if, if we do it first. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been doing squats, you know, like I'll, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I'll do I'll do my um, forearm stand. Tights. Tights is what you're doing. Yeah, leggings, tights. Yeah. Yeah. Twiggy Mixtump Wizzle is saying go EU. We agree. No, I disagree. That's what Disney said. When did they say that? Well, back in 2012 when they, or 14 when they said go away. Actually, we're going to cover something where they might have said that hmm. later. Um, go I don't away. know if you know what I'm talking about. Yes. I don't. Yeah. What do we want to talk about first? Hang on a minute. Let me. We'll talk about Zahn later. Let's get rid of this picture of Lindelof and his wife. Um, if we're not going to cover the Lindelof topic, I just got one thing to say about that. Like, dude, how much do you suck that like you're that Disney rejected your script? <laughs> Consider. Consider well, hold the on. volume of garbage that they put out. 
I think you're and you didn't meet the bar for that. I think you're you're making a mistake there. I don't think that's a reason why. I literally think they said, okay, we have three new movies coming out. We need to find like a, a, a diversity hire because you saw what Rhino showed last night. That lady is batshit insane. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they well, did it because they wanted to bring someone else in, and they just said, no, nah, Damon, we don't we don't need you anymore. It wasn't one of those things where KK didn't get along, you know, mm -hmm. with. Uh, whoever those guys were that were working on solo and rise of skywalker i literally think they said we need a, di a diversity hire mm -hmm. maybe but i think you're legitimately insane if you take mm -hmm. a gig to make a star wars movie with kathleen kennedy at the helm <laughs> exactly because either your project's never going to happen or you're going to get fired three quarters of the way through yeah, that's the pattern. Mm -hmm. Well, then maybe, hopefully, we can only hope that maybe Filoni will get fired after he's like not even halfway through. <laughs> that one, I, I think, is yeah. going to be there because, like, he, yeah, I know. civil war, civil war could yep. happen. He's a believer <laughs> in everything that Kathleen Kennedy believes in. You can, oh like, yeah, if you've listened to his interviews and seen his statements regarding bringing Leia to the front and shitting on Luke, he was excitedly on board. His own his own words. Like, it wasn't somebody saying, oh, I heard he was excited about it. Like, no, he said he was excited, enthousi enthusiastic about backburning, backburnering Luke mm -hmm. and making it about Leia. Right. He's a true believer through and through all the way because I think nobody on earth hates Luke Skywalker more than Dave Filoni. And that's the thing. And I we're think his about. body of work shows it. Right. And we we talked we discussed a little bit about that um in our DMs. And um and my point was like, oh well, you know, George, George sees himself in Luke Skywalker, right? And you pointed out and that's why Filoni hates him. You know, um, you know, George does has said in the past like he can identify with Luke in a sense and look at Filoni. Filoni hates Luke. And and to to the rumors that came out this week from you know the the local Hasbro merchandiser in Florida. Um that you know oh big news everybody they're 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 not gonna use Luke. Yeah. Well no fucking shit. Like where have you been in the last five years? What I know. Where so, did you ever get the idea that they were going to use Luke other than a gimmick cameo in which he looked like shit? Mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna basically go over that. did and said nothing. Yeah. I was gonna go over that. Um because it did come up and the story isn't so much the rumor because the rumor could be bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. It's the reaction to the rumor. The, mm -hmm. the, that's the story, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't believe that. it! Like, where have you been? Oh my god, I never knew about that. You know, and you, the the like and, it's, well, been, and it's oh been. now I'm out. Yeah, yeah, it's, that that's my point. It's the prospect of hey, yeah, now I'm out because what if they had added him? Hey, he's going to be in Mando season four. He's going to be in um, what else is coming out? Uh, Ahsoka, he's going to be in in New Republic and all that. Really, guys, the reason you're out is because the fake and what do you call him, the zombie Luke Skywalker? Yeah, that's going to wind up being Jake isn't going to be in something. So now you're out. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, here's the thing: you used that GIF a few weeks ago, Greg, that I love. I've been using it online for 15, 20 years. A Bugs Bunny towing the line. Oh yes, yes. I love that GIF. It's it's so applicable. Yeah, well, don't you know? Better not cross this line and cross the mm -hmm. line. Draws another. Better not cross. What's the line. that Helmer Fudd right? Like cross this one and yes. cross this one and cross this one. Yeah. He just keeps backing up. Yeah, Fantastic. and that's that's essentially it with with a lot of these people, and some of them are you know on our side. A lot of them are mm -hmm. on our side, and it's just mm -hmm. like, where have you been? And you know, I'm I'm kind of t tired of hearing the like. Well, they better not. This is the last straw. Like you said that about Gina. This time, I mean it. I'm not like you said that about TLJ. You said that about Rise of Skywalker. They you said, said it about Gina Carano. This right here from the beginning. But every time they shared a cameo, they again 
move the line over. And this what it really is, is, is just there's this collection of sad, pathetic losers uh -huh. out there who keep begging Lucasfilm for fucking scraps. They say, oh, ooh, they're the enemy. Kathleen Kennedy's the enemy. Woke is the enemy and everything. And then they keep begging and begging and begging for fucking scraps. Please, Lucasfilm, make something I like. Please. Fuck you. You guys are useless. Go on the other side. You might as well be. And then they're going to go support going to see right, uh, Re Return of the Jedi. I'm conflicted oh, on that. Yeah. Let's, I'm let's conflicted on that because I went that. to see the Star Trek movies in the movie theater. So, like, I get the I get the desire, right? Like, I I get it, but at the same time, like for me, I'm like, I was out of high school when the when they re released them to the theaters in the '90s. That was good enough for me mm -hmm. to go see them on the big screen. Now, like, if you were born after that, like, you haven't had the opportunity, I, I get why some people would want to. Yeah. But I think the, you have to think uh, less selfishly, or I would encourage you to think less selfishly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and not feed your money to the people right. that hate well, your guts and everything you stand for and call you toxic and racist and a man baby and a basement dweller. Mm -hmm. I just don't that. see the appeal. Like, you know, maybe it's because I'm not a movie guy. I don't like going to the movies, but if I can watch it in my own home with surround sound and, you know, I can pause it and go take a piss or whatever, like that for me is like more ideal than mm -hmm. actually being there. I just, I don't see the appeal. I Maybe just don't somebody could to, explain it to me. I just don't want to give my money to them. Right. Now, I don't want to here's, support it. Here's a little bit of the difference for me when it when it came to going to see Star Trek. Okay. Uh, you know, like I went to see Wrath of Khan and meet William Shatner. And uh, one, it wasn't widely distributed. It was like, you know, one theater rental like at a time. So it's not like this big wide release. Mm -hmm. Um the other thing is, is like the environment there with the people that went to pay that kind of money to go see it weren't new Trek fans. I think you will get a lot of new star Wars fans in the audience. Yeah. In this one. And yeah. like that to me, it would ruin the, the experience of watching it with like-minded, truly reverent fans. Mm hmm because I can tell you when I went to see Star Trek, like every single freaking line, like bone spoke that was like a laugh line, people chuckled. Like they were into it. Yeah. But they didn't keep going. They quickly shut up so the rest of the, you know, we could hear everything else. I mean, th that's the kind of people you, if you're going to, if you're going to go to the theater for the social experience, which is kind of weird because you can't really socialize in a theater. But if you're going for that audience experience, like that's the crowd you want to go with. And I don't think that's what's going to be there for this release for Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Right. And part of me, like there's a little part of me that wants it to be very successful, successful because it's one of George's movies, but the money's not going to original Lucasfilm under George anymore. And so that's this is, what this is how they're going to fund the Acolyte. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how they're going to earn their money back. That's you guys are going to go watch and you're going to help fund the rest of the project that they 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 have on the schedule. Yep. That's what this is about. I don't yeah, think so it's going it, to even draw that many people to be honest. Like I don't think it's going to Well, mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, this channel isn't necessarily like a dedicated Star Wars channel, but it's run by a guy who knows a lot about it and all that. Yeah. So I'm not going like I'm straight up telling you, I am not going. Is it playing here where I live? Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. But if I have time either tonight, I'm not tonight, tomorrow night or Sunday night, 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to go down into my living room with my 85 inch television, turn off all the lights, hook up a DVD player, and I'm going to play the 2006 unaltered version of it without Jedi rocks. And kind of sadly, without, without the Darth Vader, no, 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 I, I don't, yeah, without that, but I don't even have that version at all. I don't have it. The last God, version I the bought was the 2006. The um, and sadly, though, without the the uh, victory celebration, I mm -hmm. like that. That's one of the only things I like about the special editions. Yeah. You know, the do, 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 do. instead of like the yub nub. I like the yub nub too, though. Yeah. I like yub nub, but I do think that the, the change in the score at the end of Return of the Jedi, um, filmed with like an extended version of the celebrations across the galaxy and everything, I, I think is the better version. It's it's right. very emotional, right? Yes. Yeah. I agree. And don't forget that they changed it too because they added Naboo after the prequels happened. Yep. Yeah. So, yes. you know. Yeah, and I, anyway. I, 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 I enjoyed that. I thought that the melody was kind of better fitting for the end. Yeah, it was, it was good. And then seeing the statue come down, that was kind of emotional because we've seen that happen in real life, right? Right. You yeah. Know, like I mean, it happens Hussein's a lot when there's down. yeah um, uprising. It happens or... in America, you know when. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah it was good but the most of the rest of it i i didn't like like oh hey let's do the java scene never wanted to see that i like the scene with with uh what's that guy's name um that the actor that was the stand-in for java his oh, name yeah. is on the tip of my tongue i know big he's... big guy right i yeah. love the fact I love that we got to see that in from Star Wars to Jedi. I like watching it just for that, hearing him with, I think he was Scottish, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, like, have you now? Yes. I'm my boy. Why haven't you paid me? You know, that was so fun watching, but like, I didn't want to see the actual scene. Yeah, so I didn't want it, you don't want it in the movie. No. And it really, it didn't fit. I mean, that was a good, you know, like just, e even if they could have done the the work logistically to film it back in 1975 like I, I think it's better like we didn't need to know a whole lot about Jabba the Hutt at that point in the story mm -hmm. we just what need to know guy? that he's a gangster out there that Han owes money to like it's something that we can relate to in the real world because like there's loan sharks and gangsters on earth and everything like we we get it like it doesn't need to be super explained well, that's like them re that's just like them like introducing Palpatine too early because Palpatine was like Jabba. He what they we knew of him existing, but we didn't see him until later. Dom Hall Gleason, Dom Hall I think Gleason? that was his name. Let me okay. look it up. Let me see if my Star Wars knowledge is there. Dom Hall Gleason. <laughs> um, no, that's the name of oh shit, that's the name of of the print caller. Mm -hmm. That's the name of 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 General. What's his name? The general Hux. prank caller. Yeah. Hux. What what is that guy's name? Let's see. I gotta Jabba. look this up now. Fake Jabba actor. I don't know Who, whose daddy him. is now, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. I was close. It's it's Declan Mulholland. Yeah. So I was close. Yeah, totally the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the general Hux, but hey, we have someone else in back that we need to bring on in if only i could find his intro or is it organize your clips <laughs> i do every single time and they get pushed down so far that it's just like <laughs> Member of the Fellowship, Liquid Blake is in the house. What's going on? <laughs> How is everyone? Good. 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 The Very man good. who likes no refs ever on Earth. No. <laughs> yeah. They've got, they should be replaced with robots. <laughs> so here are the guys. I can, guys. I, can I, I can tell on Twitter when you're watching your your sports ball. Yeah. <laughs> I can always tell. 
<laughs> so here in the United States, like I don't know if in your area, Greg, it's it's a big thing, but I know where Laura lives because I used to live near there, and where I live now, like softball, men's softball is a big thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Is it big where you live, Greg? Um, not that I'm aware of. So you know what I, you I call don't... the umpire when you want to complain, right? No. It's like, I mean, these guys are playing like with not for money, just because they're they're dumbasses that can injure themselves in this <laughs> extracurricular activity after work and stuff. It's fun. Leave. Oh, you know what? Well, yeah, it's in fun, Milwaukee, oh, I here's what you do: like you underhand the ball. Oh, it's outside ball, like. And you hear this big guy. It's like, come on, blue. That was a strike. Come on, blue. Come yeah, on, blue. blue. You call him blue. Yeah. yeah that's it's right. It's like that's bitching about out. the ref is like, what the hell's up with that, Blake? What's up, blue? Oh, it's universal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you've got, oh, there's, it's just the game I follow, rugby league. It's, there's this whole new raft of rule changes that they've brought in to do with mm-hmm. like how players can tackle each other and, and all sorts of things. And there's so much confusion that, most games like players get uh, sent from the kind of like a in ice hockey like a, a two minute penalty but in our game because the game's 80 minutes they're gone for 10 minutes so if mm-hmm. someone's gone for that amount of time in the game like it can pretty much um <laughs> dictate the entire result of the game so there's a lot of weird changes brought in and it's pissing a lot of people off including me yeah to make you say bruh 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 <laughs> Well, I, I can tell you, like, you know, I'm certainly not a stranger to bitching at the TV, you know, about the refs, you know, back in the day when I, I, I watched football, um, by the way, go Jets, um, <laughs> who, who took Aaron Rodgers gazillion dollar contract off the Packers hands. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like I, I certainly shouted at the at the rest from time to time because you, you see some calls and you're like. I mean, I guess technically was a hold, but it was like 70 yards away from the play and it had no impact. So right, like, right. Whatever. And then I'll and then the pussification rules. Yeah. I think as a general rule, at least three players every season should die on the field. <laughs> that's the level, that's the level of safety that I would <laughs> shoot for. Oh boy. That's it's basically great. like I think like uh, the, the only legal tackle should be top of helmet under chin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. You guys wear those helmets, and you guys like when you're tackling, you use them as a, a weapon. And it's like if you do that in rugby league, you're just going to knock yourself out more than do any damage to them. And well, the helmets are the things... very freaking sophisticated now. But yeah, the, I yeah. mean that's been an illegal tackle since like forever. Yeah. <laughs> Sports are the root. It's a different, it's a different era. Like there's a, like there's so many things like uh, brawls and stuff that used to happen in in rugby league back in the eighties and stuff. Pa- uh, players used to just get like stiff armed and basically almost get their head like ripped off their body and it'd just be play on. But now you go anything above the shoulders, it's a l- immediate uh, penalty and they stop the game. And there's just all sorts of weird shit. Uh, yeah, but it is. It's definitely. And the announcers a era. have to like tisk tisk them for like ten minutes on the air. I mean, like, mm, there's just not. Yeah. It's just uncalled for in this game. It's just so unnecessary. It's like ah, fuck you. Bring back the clothesline. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the lariat. Yeah, like that's what I want to see. <laughs> so. Anyway, this isn't the sports stream, right? No. We got to come up with a with a sports stream with a. I need to come up with a name for a sports stream, Blake. Some kind of punny name for a sports stream. Your that's, um, that's your job. Yeah, exactly. Um. Anyway, what were we talking about? We were talk- yeah, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, we're not. I'm not seeing it. Uh, are you going to see it, Alora? Alora's not seeing it. Greg, are you going to go see it? <laughs> no. You don't want to see Jedi rocks on the big screen. I. I th- I'll be honest, like, I don't give a flying fuck about anniversaries for movies of any kind ever. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's a good movie that I want to watch, I'll just watch it. Like, I don't, like, ooh, it's the whatever anniversary of this. Like, who, who cares? Yeah. I, I just don't. I, 
I don't care. So like if when I want to watch Return of the Jedi, I'll I'll pop in uh, the Blu-ray or DVD or or V. I have the I have like the the VHSs from way back when. Yeah, I think I have a VHS player, but Ancient I'll watch technology. it when I feel like watching it. And and to be honest, I'm one of those people that have just have been to- so turned off by where Star Wars has gone that. I don't really have an impulse to watch it, mm-hmm. but it's something that, like, if it's on, I'll get glued. I'll get, I'll get sucked into it. But I just, I can never. I very rarely cross that threshold where it's just like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna sit down and watch this now. Right. Because I, I, yep. I mean, I've seen it so many, so many times. Like, mm-hmm. so, so Blake, any idea if it's playing over there? down there i wouldn't have a clue no um okay there's been a lot of uh the old um sort of comeback uh screenings for old movies lately and uh Mm -hmm. i live near an independent theater and they have like a one that runs year round it's and they bring one back every week but i haven't really heard of any of the star wars or even those star trek sort of event ones around here right so i don't i don't watch television so i wouldn't know if you know they've been pushing it here in the United States. Like, hey, it's out at the theater. Has anyone else? Have you seen it on TV or anything, Laura, Greg? I don't watch TV. Okay. Um, I don't watch TV too much either. But if it's on um, and one of the family catches it, they'll put put it on for me. They're like, oh, look, look what's on, you know, kind of deal. Um, I just, if I wanted to watch it or whatever, I just pop it in and um, play it. So that's yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. There's this great there's this great quote from uh Babylon 5 where they're they're trying to rescue the captain. Like this is during the climax of pretty much the entire series and there's some of these indoctrinated guards and they're guarding like his prison cell and uh Garibaldi says something like um uh, you know something on TV and the guard was like I don't watch TV. He says, uh, because I guess TV still exists, like in the 2260s. He's like, I don't watch TV. Uh, How does he say it? I I used to have a clip of it, but I got claimed for it, so I deleted it. But he's like, I don't watch TV. It's it's a cultural wasteland that that, uh, pushes an unrealistic portrayal of life created by the liberal media elite. (laughs) It was just a great line, because he he just like rattled it off like it was like a you know, almost like a memorized uh, motto or something like that. I, I need to bring that clip back. I don't care if I get claimed for it because it's a great line. But no, I haven't seen whether or not they've pushed it. But yeah. I saw it on, I didn't know last night. I'm online right here and I'm researching Star Wars, Googling it, nothing about it. And then I come home from work and it's all over the place. I'm like, holy shit, it's trending on Twitter and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So yeah, people are out there seeing it. Yeah, Disney I'm sure that my tweet is people ad space off. on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Huh? Disney buys a ton of ad space on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like I see Disney tweets from any anything from movies to to the streaming or, or whatever all the time. And they're all promoted, promoted, promoted. Mm-hmm. Right. Disney loves Disney's marketing department loves to create astroturf trends Mm -hmm. they think that's a big win Mm -hmm. yeah it is not a win Mm -mm. well no because i'll be honest like even like even most of their fan base now that they've cultivated isn't going to go see i don't think they're going to go see return of the jedi in the movie theater no absolutely not um so that's some will i suppose but yeah Hmm. so that that's kind of return of the jedi like we've been sharing photos and and stuff like that from return of the jedi to celebrate the 40th anniversary we're going to continue doing that but yeah not going to see it so i found a couple of dog shit articles here um the first one is and you know it wasn't just hey it's screen rant these are a little bit more sophisticated than screen rant here's the escapist 
from a couple of days or yesterday actually with the Mandalorian season three, Dave Filoni is once again fixing Star Wars. And we don't have to read the whole thing. He's the one breaking Star Wars. But here's here's the gist of this article, guys. This fixed the prequels. Oh my god. That thing again, that saying that mm-hmm. the Yep. He definitely fixed the prequels. So l- listen to this. Um, maybe you weren't alive when the prequel trilogy came out, and you've only experienced the tepid hatred of a trilogy of movies that peak at somewhere around okay. But over the years, the prequel trilogy came out, things were not so good for Star Wars. It wasn't bottom of the barrel TROS level, but it wasn't great. The trilogy was a mess to many. That is, until Star Wars The Clone Wars came out three years after the final film. Dave Filoni, hand-selected by George Lucas, began releasing a series that slowly, very slowly, retroactively improved the trilogy by telling the story of what happened between Episode 2 and Episode 3. In turn, it retroactively improved a host of characters and remedied plotting issues while also introduce, introducing us to one of Star Wars' most beloved characters, Ahsoka. Our own oh, Darren Mooney oh. has already covered this idea at length, and, and this article is about The Mandalorian, but the bottom line is that the series kept Star Wars alive and even brought it to a healthier place. Holy fucking shit. This is not parody. Do not adjust your television set. Uh, I'm sure this I, isn't I, written by Dave Filoni. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be. see if and it's the a thing though is he's got so many stupid worshippers out there. That Matthew Razak. I don't know. I don't think that's Dave Filoni. I, I don't know in what way it fixed Obi Wan Kenobi or Anakin Skywalker, mm-hmm. and the introduction of a character in Ahsoka just like strung in between the two movies but then disappears for the third like doesn't make Ew. any sense to me as far as fixing the issues with with the prequel movies like you know i don't think the t- prequel movies are perfect but, but the issues i have with them is is mostly having to do with how childish some of the things in it are Mm -hmm. and clone wars quintuple downs on that right i was gonna just say that that it's clone wars in itself is very very childish and again it it, it marvelizes like if if you love all things superhero and you want everything to be turned into superhero crap then i you know sure you're gonna like the clone wars Mm mm-hmm Right. Well, but yeah, his point was, the writer's point was, the article's about Mandalorian because to further that point, they're saying that Mandalorian is fixing Star Wars. So it's fixing so, the OT probably since it's closer to well, let, let Yeah, let's read. So now Filoni, alongside John Favreau, is doing the exact same thing with The Mandalorian. And season three was the most obvious confirmation of this fact as it worked to begin not just revitalizing the franchise on the whole, <laughs> on the whole, but also <laughs> fleshing out the details of plot decisions that Disney made that were mind-bogglingly dumb and hoping to at least put them in some sort of context. Granted, there is plenty of other content out there attempting to do this as well, from comic books to novels to interviews with writers, directors, explaining what they really meant these comic books by the way are just like awful all the ideas they come up with and it's the same with star trek these idw comics just absolute there's dog shit characterizations and storylines you want to talk about dumb like that is the one word description of mandalorian seasons one through three like i like star wars has never been dumber Mm-hmm. And like, if saying, you've seen any of the seasons, like you would know this, and like you don't need to see season three to understand it. You can read about how stupid the plot line is and how idiotic the the, the 
the things that they're doing are and you know mm -hmm. from you know the dork saber rules are this and then the nope now they're this the helmet rule is this oh nope there's an exception to the helmet rule like to the the idiotic uh you know pez vizsla's death where he literally could have just walked backwards and lived like just through and through every aspect of the production of the mandalorian is dumb garbage okay yeah. I have a question for you, Tuscan, since you have watched TCW. Tuscan? Tuscan Bob. Um, Greg, <laughs> <laughs> which one do you think is yes. more better, TCW or Mandalorian? Um, you're, you're asking me, like, which one is true, and then you're giving me two false things. <laughs> which one is better between the two, Mandalorian or TCW? You just want to analyze and compare the two. Um, <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> that's that's tough because they're both really crap, but they're crap for different reasons. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. And see, that's my that's the point I want to make is that TCW and Mandalorian, even the other shows that Filoni and Favreau are associated with, don't add any constructive content to it it just dumb dumbs down star wars as a whole and that's right, i got it star wars basically to this guy these dumbed down shows is fixing star wars fixing george lucas the one that created star wars i have no problems with the pt other than a few little things here and there the plot line is pretty great um anakin's fall yes it was really great it could have you know i wish that you know we could have got a little bit more of the cut scenes that were taken out of of Revenge of the Sith, but I understand that should have been four movies. Should have yeah. been four movies. Right, the, four movies. I I did like the fact that, um, and I might be the few or whatever that, or I didn't care that Anakin was brought in at nine years old because we had to see this young boy grow up in there and him become conflicted and the reason why and stuff like that. We were taken through that journey. I do have an answer though. And, okay. and, and it's really because they're they're both really bad, but I'm going to say TCW is actually worse. Okay. Because TCW fucks with the timeline mm -hmm. in yeah. the prequel and the OT. And mm -hmm. the Mandalorian exists mm -hmm. in a time period that's completely fake and doesn't exist post Return of the Jedi. So the Mandalorian doesn't hurt the OT. Yeah, as okay. much as TCW hurt both the prequels and the OT. Because, well, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, I love TCW you. and Rebels together mm -hmm. because essentially they're the same fucking show. Yeah. yeah. Just one, it's renamed and it takes place a little bit. Like, okay, it's not the clones and not Anakin and, and Obi Wan anymore. Now it's, That's you so know. Well, it's Bimbo and and Freddie <laughs> Prince Jr. Yeah, and that's and uh, and then the Solo show is going to carry on that plot from Rebels, you know. So because the epilogue in Rebels basically is her going out to look for Ez, Ezra or whatever his name is and Thrawn. So that's what that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I'll be yeah, like the, the inclusion of Ahsoka or the introduction of Ahsoka, I think is just been a terrible thing for star wars in general mm -hmm. yeah because she's just a terrible she's a terrible person mm -hmm. well yeah you're right and you know i'm your alibi can cover that for sure yes. but Definitely. this she's yeah, covered this it extensively fun. yeah the whole premise of this article is just insane let's see if they give any examples um, but that kind of extended content just doesn't have the impact of a TV show or movie, barely swinging the general public's understanding. No, to truly retcon a franchise out of the suck, you've got to make something big. That's what The Mandalorian is. It's big and it's working. While season three of the show begins fixing plot points and characters from the sequel films, it should be noted that Filoni and Fabro had different goals in seasons one and two of The Mandalorian. Those seasons fix Star Wars in a far different way than this third season was attempting, in the kind of way where something is presumed irreparably broken to its very core. Those two seasons repaired the very being of Star Wars, 
after Disney's film efforts split the fan base and then completely tore it all down with the turgid The Rise of Skywalker. The first two seasons, especially the first, were about rebuilding faith in the franchise that had nearly completely lost it. Like, holy shit. That first season was... Honestly, I think one may be worse than two. I know that we think two is bad, but mm-hmm. one was like, hey, you know, again, you're in some kind of game and your mentally retarded brother with the with the controller that, that isn't even plugged in is mm-hmm. like, like like sitting there thinking he's controlling the character. Yeah. That's what season one was. Like there was no development whatsoever, the main character. And they're saying that is what is fixing Star Wars. Again, no examples, not one example here. Like when we make videos and we make tweets, we give examples. And look at that deep fake face of Luke Skywalker right there. That's fixing Star Wars. <laughs> that is like the model of fixing Star Wars right there. That is so fake. <laughs> I, I think like yeah. try and give the benefit of the doubt. Like I think he's talking about like, well, it's it fixed Star Wars in the meta sense, as in like People were more accepting of it, yeah. And yeah. and some of some of the detractors who hate the sequel trilogies with the, with a passion or just accept Mandalorian for some reason. So yeah, that's true. In, that's in, true. In that sense, he's kind of right because there were a lot of people that are like, "Oh, this is real Star Wars." And it's like it's so dumb, and there's it's just going nowhere. I I don't. I don't, I don't see what you're seeing. Mm-hmm. Like, it has Star Wars stuff in it, okay? Mm-hmm. And it didn't shit on Luke Skywalker, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, at least it didn't in the first season. I would argue, like, I know a lot of people just loved and cheered Chapter 16 where Luke came back and was a zombie and barely said any lines and was, it was like, it was like Luke Skywalker on, you know, an overdose of ADD medication. Like he just (laughs) wasn't even there. He was like glossy eyed and just like oblivious to like the ramifications of everything that was going around him. Yeah. Like, but that's fixing Luke Skywalker because we got to see him go, you know, wildly swing a lightsaber around against a bunch of dumb robots who can only do forward jab. Mm -hmm. Right. Forward jab. Yeah, it was like an Atari game where you only had the frontal attack available as an option. Yeah, yeah. And, like, The Mandalorian as a show, from the get-go, has been a video game story. But that's insulting to video games because it's, like, it's that, but, like, even worse as far as, like, the characters just behaving like complete empty npcs reciting lines and this is the way and and what was that other what you know what did what did that other guy say in the first season i have spoken it's just spoken yeah just dumb stupid phrases that the bobbleheads (laughs) just repeat back to their tv i have spoken (laughs) that's the way Yeah, yeah, and and like the armorer and stuff like that, all the nonsense that she's. How can you listen to the armorer talk and not want to just bash her fucking helmet in? (laughs) I am told you, like the way she talks is just like just fucking talk normal, you stupid bitch. She's like she sounds like a cultist, just like what they want her to sound, sound, you know, sound like. So she's got like this sing-songy voice, but it's Mm -hmm. in like monotone. Fake, yeah, so fake. So annoying. She even said that line, remember? Like, oh, yeah, this stupid fucking green kid. I have to deal with him and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, this is the way. It's, yeah. <laughs> Gosh. This is the way. This is the Milky Way. <laughs> Do you realize like, that cult never actually hears any of their members' actual voices ever? Because what it's constantly was under the, 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 the <laughs> what party. Was that? It wasn't for me. <laughs> okay, but like, 
<laughs> it was constantly the constantly talk <laughs> under the retarded like you know radio muting helmet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all have like this distorted voice, so like nobody's ever heard like Mandalorians, like their own people's like actual real voices. Right. Mm-hmm. It's always true to hell. Unless they need, unless they needed to prove they had a face to get into somewhere, you know. Yes. Yes. Gosh, that that scene, like you see people praising that scene, the Bill Burr thing, and like. Yeah. That entire sequence made no sense. Like, hey, hey, there's an officer in there that I know who he is. And he's like elbowing him in the stomach. Hey, hey, we better not go in there in plain view of the guy. You know, that was like the first stupid part. And then they walk in. It's like, oh, we got to access this computer. And like, I'm going to take my helmet off. And uh, just the whole thing. And then the worried look on his face the whole time as Bill Bird does his thing. It's like, man. You know, for like an imperial trooper, he really does have this worried look on his face. Maybe he's an infiltrator. I don't know. Gosh, that was bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, and that's not even the start of the bad in that episode. I mean, that was the 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 culmination of the, that was like the peak bad of the episode. But remember, earlier in that episode, we had these like nativeish kind of Tuscan looking gangster dudes who all had like endless supplies of fucking grenades but were fighting with sticks uh, yeah yeah <laughs> hold on hold on son of luke wait we watch man no so about coming up on two and a half years ago we had this this efap stream on raging rhino's channel and we just like tore it apart and for me like that was enough i'm like okay we proved the point like that Disney Star Wars storytelling makes no sense. Their lore adherence makes no sense. And mm-hmm. I was done. So I kind of stopped it. But we had a great time back in late 2020, early mm-hmm. 2021, talking about all that stuff. But that was a long time ago. Yeah, you got to remember, like, you know, the season two finished... Right before Christmas, late, 2020. Yeah, in, in late 2020. And season three started in 2023. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a hell of a gap between seasons. Because they did to go to this Book of Boba Fett thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which and Mandalorian they really started in. For season three anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mandalorian kind of took over Book of Boba Fett for almost half of the, the episodes, basically. Well, two like, of the seven episodes were. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If it barely was in it. Yeah. <laughs> get it, get it. And or he was laying in the back to tank, remembering, recalling, sleeping in the back. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure Ahsoka is going to break the streak of Star Wars shows that have nothing to do with their main characters. Because I just like, there's no way Filoni's sidelining fucking Ahsoka. <laughs> But they sure in the hell will sideline like Luke and all of them. They're not going to be in that. We already know that. It's like, and people are calling it like Air of the Empire adaptation. No, it is not. It can't be without without Luke, and they're just not going to use Luke. And, you know, again, to the people who thought they were going to, like, logistically, how were they going to do it? Right. They were going to do digital Luke through the entire, like, you're going to have a Luke Skywalker show with just all digital. All like, zombies. Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. this i mean this article is just bad it's like let me write look how long it is let me write this many words to try to rationalize my point that oh right. hey look it's it's uh fixing star wars but to your point greg it's more about like hey what is getting people interested but there's a difference between getting people that are very vocal interested and it actually being successful to the point where you know, they're at pre-2012 levels where people are really interested in buying the books and and buying the merchandise and all that stuff. I don't think that's happening. I think all the lowercase weirdo Twitter cartoon ever avatar accounts, I don't think they're actually going out there and really supporting the brand. I just, you go to the store and you see Star Wars stuff stacked up. Right. No, and like, I, you know, <laughs> you, you hear all this stuff about like season three is like drop in uh 
popularity versus even just like season two. It, like the the fix doesn't even last didn't even last that long. Right. Because remember, these are just eight episode seasons. So like we're talking like it, it sputtered after sixteen episodes. In the you know for for us it sputtered from episode one, but for a, a chunk of the public it sputtered after after just sixteen episodes because there's just nowhere to go when your characters aren't characters, right, mm-hmm. right, and have no motivations at all and just are literally like, tell me what to do and I'll go do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, anyway, that's that article. We've covered that type of stuff many times. Mm-hmm. Here's one from CNN. Anal Isis. Anal Isis. Analysis, sorry, by <laughs> Brian Lowry. Five ways Return of the Jedi messed up Star Wars from a certain point of view. And here, here it is again. You know, a bunch of words. Uh, CNN. Huh? Another, this is like, this is uh, Screen Rant esque listicle. Five ways it did this. Oh, five yeah. Five ways it didn't. Exactly. Mm-hmm. When Return of the Jedi brought the original Star Wars trilogy to a close in 1983, expectations were unfairly elevated for the movie and later tempered by the recognition it had misfortune to follow The Empire Strikes Back, one of the best sequels ever. Yet looking back 40 years after the initial release as Jedi returns to theaters to commemorate the anniversary, which we're not going to go to see, the missteps made by the third movie are still irritating. That's in part because those shortcomings have echoed, 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 echoed through the years as subsequent Star Wars mythology has contorted itself, sometimes messily, in order to accommodate them. To be fair... The movie did a lot of things well, from Luke Skywalker's enhanced powers put on display in the opening sequence in which he frees Han Solo, to the breakneck chase on the Ewok moon, the scope of the final space battle, and the warm celebration at the end. Plus, a lot of us have been saying it's a trap when walking into uncomfortable situations for roughly the last of our decade. So, last four decades. So, they don't mention the stuff that I think makes Star Wars good. In fact, I've already read this article. Wait wait until you see where he goes with this. Stay tuned. Still, Episode 6 ill-served some of the original trilogy's significant characters in ways that have been debated across the decades, yielding the kind of arguments that have become one of the Star Wars franchise's most renewable resources. So... In no particular order, here are some of the moments, some of those moments and the buts that go along with them. So here's a quote I know, somehow, I've always known. Having Luke and Leia secretly be brother and sister neatly resolved the central love triangle while answering Yoda's cryptic reference to another hope, to a, he should have put another hope in quotes, he only put another, another hope in The Empire Strikes Back. But it's hard to accept the I've always known thing, given Leia's let's make up jealous kiss and Luke mooning over her throughout the first movie, which feels a little creepy with the benefit of hindsight. Alora, please explain this one to the audience, because I know you have in the recent past. So this whole thing about Leia knowing, you know, we, we can say it's her force abilities because she was born first. So she kind of remembers her mother through the force, what have you. But with this um, thing about Leia and Han and Luke and that so-called love triangle, of course they didn't know each other. They didn't know that they were siblings. She did make him jealous. That doesn't mean that this was incest. Yeah, the the, the kiss in, in uh, the Hoth sick mm-hmm. bay, right? Yeah. You know, that was just to yeah, make and- Han jealous because she really loved him and liked him at that point even yeah she and, and even han confirms it that's what gets her mad because he's confirming how she's falling for him how uh-huh. he's falling for mm-hmm. her and she's like well and she doesn't want to believe it yet and yep. so she makes him jealous and then even the kiss when she kisses him for good luck when they're crossing the um 
crossing over that little gap in the um that chasm in the death star or whatever that's just a kiss for good luck or whatever like a um, little peck uh, come yeah. on <laughs> yeah. and then when she kisses him when he's in the sick bay that is just you know like i, I wouldn't even call that a relationship kiss other than being concerned there are some things kiss. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a relationship kiss that's not like you know like that and so people yeah. are confusing that it doesn't make it doesn't mean that they know their siblings at that point and it makes sense even after um they find out that they're siblings and stuff and it doesn't mean that that was incest because incest is about people still knowing that they're related and having the relationship anyways and well, um go ahead it's just like it's an expression like i've always known as an expression mm -hmm. and it, like it's not like literally i've always known like because yeah. if you go oh literally she's always known then she should have said hey bro instead of like aren't you short for a stormtrooper mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's just like just because i've always known is not like literally always it's just like i've known for a while yeah and there's there's Our, time gaps well, in between the movies Hold on. Here's yeah. what I've here's what I've likened likened it to. When she says, "I know somehow I've always known." Maybe what happened in the sick bay is what clued her into that. Because let's go to another movie two years later, Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. Remember when when oh, Marty's yeah. Marty's mom finally finally kissing like kisses him? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like it's like I'm kissing my brother. You know, so maybe whenever that happened, that's kind of what she meant that like, wait a minute, there's something weird here, you know, <laughs> like, and, and, and hey, let's pretend they weren't brother and sister. I don't see Luke as the type that she necessarily would have been attracted to because right. for whatever reason, you know, um, yeah. but maybe it was like a, like a, like a mercy date type thing you know like oh i'm gonna kiss him to make han jealous and whatever and then in that process she's like whoa wait a minute mm -hmm. this this is weird this guy isn't right for me and yeah. then when he told her that it was like oh now it makes sense why it felt so weird yeah kissing him i think that yeah. was was george's intent with yeah. that line but of and course then, this dipshit writing this doesn't realize that and then when you look at the whole relationship between her and han yeah it, it it george made it very apparent whether they're going to be you know sister and brother or not that her gravitation towards han was going to be it that's where she was going to land no matter what mm -hmm. because that's very evident in empire strikes back with how she responds to him how he responds to her they're back and forth when they're together running from the empire in the asteroid belt and stuff um it's very apparent with that it's even apparent when she goes rescues him before um before you know luke sits down and talks to her about their your their familial re relationship being brother and sister and stuff it's very apparent where she's going with and her feelings towards han no matter if george made them her and luke siblings or not that's where she was going to end up at right right yeah so it what, what? doesn't really matter and the kiss from the past before they found out really doesn't matter because I didn't know. And it doesn't really mean ancestral feelings or ancestral geez. Yeah, which you know what I mean. But anyways, it doesn't mean that they were going, they were going to fall in love and commit the sin of being siblings and making out and blah, blah, blah. That's not the intent George yes. is meaning. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was at a point where he can make that decision and make it make sense inside the overall lore. What do you got here, yeah. Greg? Uh, just something that I, because the implication that a lot of people make is that Return of the Jedi was such a dismal failure compared to Empire Strikes Back. Look at the numbers. Inflation adjusted domestic box office. Return mm -hmm. of the Jedi did $30 million, $35 million Dude, left. I'm not exaggerating. When I, I spoke about this earlier, I went to see it like 13 times. Mm -hmm. in 1983 because i get my grandfather to take me i get like an uncle to take me you know and we went with school you know everyone like i went to see it as much as possible so it was a huge hit in fact let me show you guys this here there are the numbers guys yeah it did what 10 million more than and that's with adjust with inflation adjusted but right 
so like like there there was a significant drop off because every you know the the consensus is that is that Empire That's Strikes the Back is the best it, movie. By the way. Mm -hmm. Right, the consent. Oh, Empire Strikes Back is the best one. Mm -hmm. Well, Empire Strikes Back did like half of a new yeah. hope. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then, Return of the Jedi did similar mm -hmm. to Empire Strikes Back. Pretty, pretty close. Right. So, like, I mean, that narrative that 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 it's just like, oh my God, Return of the Jedi was such a terrible failure compared to the other ones. Like, it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan. And um, Blake, what do you think? Because we haven't heard from you. Well, that's the trend, isn't it? With the a lot of the Star Wars movies, the first one like way outgrosses what's coming after it. That's always been the trend in movies that the sequels, like further sequels, typically do less than than the originals. Yeah, and they buck yeah. the trend. Yeah, and there's very few movies that buck that trend and you know it's especially like direct sequels i think you know mcu for a while definitely bucked that trend but they were kind of all over the place as far as box office numbers go as well yeah and, and there was people, much lower people seem like to think 80s. that every every movie made a billion dollars is like go yeah. look at the numbers and they didn't yeah mm -hmm. some of the action movies in the 80s and 90s sort of hit that trend where they were going upwards for a while like die hard and lethal weapon but it was only really for like the first three. And there was so much space between Lethal Weapon, especially with, I think, between two and then three and then between three and four and with Die Hard between three. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, they uh, they sort of, it's almost like a first movie again, but yeah. you, know, you get, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that has always been the trend with sequels that most of the time they, they do go downwards. But that has for me, that's always been the big one with Star Wars. Like that first movie hits such huge heights that the ones that follow it, it's it's almost like it's impossible to sustain. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, and a lot of people use that to be like, you know, ooh, well, the same thing happened between Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Like, I don't think they're quite the same. No. And you also like, have because... the benefit. Sorry, you also have the benefit of the re-releases of the first movie when the second comes out and then the re-release yeah. again when the third comes out so you have that benefit but really and it's, it's a different era too like worldwide yeah. box office you know for for u.s movies was was kind of shit back in the 80s and the 70s yeah. like mm -hmm. like there was no money overseas really because like, like yeah. markets like india and china were like zero dollars yeah, and the the yeah the parity between the like what for, for you guys the domestic box office and the international box office sort of really came into play with the MCU in in a way at the start of that trend maybe twenty ten ish mm -hmm. where they started to catch up where they were even the domestic and the international but right. yeah before that it was you Titanic I think well. maybe yeah that was, was one, a, that was one that it. Um... But yeah, like typically the the international box office, you know, is not where the big money is. And no, you know, not at the all. the studios return on international ticket sales is significantly less too. Yeah. So like, you know, you, you have to pay your distributors and everything and then, you know, a number of countries have um some rather protectionist type schemes in place. Mhm. Mm um, to siphon money from U.S. distributors exhibiting films in their countries, like India has, you know, China the, takes another twenty percent, and China they don't get nearly they, they ain't getting fifty sixty percent of the the gross. The studios don't over yeah. there; they get far far less, like you know, thirty percent, mm. in in some cases. So if they're lucky. Yeah, if if they're lucky, and you know they give them permission to even exist over there, so like it's it's a different world now. But Return of the Jedi was not like, yeah, there there's you know people can point to some script issues, like you know the the, the like rem her remembering her mother, her mother. is, is one mm -hmm. everybody loves to everybody loves to think be like oh but the prequels they they broke that because like she died in childbirth so how could that be and and it's like. Mm -hmm. Okay, like even even if you give give it no excuses, canon wise and everything, be like, yep, that's absolutely a retcon. What did it impact? Mm -hmm. 
Nothing. <laughs> you know, when, when you look at them inventing things like tracking fobs in between series or, um, you know, new force powers or, or you know, dyads and light speed ramming and, and things like that, like, that's like, man, that affects every single battle going forward and makes us question every single battle before. Because why didn't anybody mm -hmm. else think of this at some point? And the Leia thing, like, you know, whether or not her memories, like, it didn't change his Luke's, Luke's trajectory and what he was going to do with Vader at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. It had no yeah. impact. It was just like, yeah. it's some dialogue in there to keep the conversation going. It was, and, and you know, it's like, yeah, it's annoying if you, like, when things get changed like that, but, like, you have to factor in how, you know, what is the impact of that? And, you yeah. know, these type of, that type of thing, there's zero impact. Right. It didn't Just change like, yeah. either character's right. trajectory. Yeah, just like in the novelization, you know, you have Yoda that's blue. And then in the novelization, you have um, Obi-Wan that is Lar, um, Owen Lars's brother or something like that. Really doesn't impact much other than the relationship changed from, you know, Obi-Wan to Anakin being his stepbrother and stuff like that. So, I mean, very minor, very minor details that really doesn't impact the plot going forward. It's just like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. well, he, he messed up on that, but it's it, that's all. Well, especially yeah. in the lay one. Imagine if her response was just simply like, I don't know, I don't remember her. Right. Yeah, and it could have been that. Nothing else about the movie would have changed. Right. Yeah. No matter if you change your dialogue or not there, it doesn't change a damn thing. <laughs> Well, point two. We've proven our point on point one. Luke Skywalker, pacifist Jedi Knight. Great. Luke's, Luke defeats Darth Vader and doesn't turn to the dark side of the Force by sparing him. But then he foolishly tosses away his lightsaber, leaving himself at the mercy of the Emperor. Instead of disarming himself, wouldn't it have been a whole lot more exciting and made more sense... If he had fought the Emperor and then on the verge of losing, his dad stepped in instead of just turning him into a force lightning pincushion. And that seemingly paved the way for Luke running off and hiding in the most recent trilogy. All right, oh, someone wow. go. That, okay, that is so wrong on so many <laughs> levels. I, I'm sorry. Like, look. Um, you go ahead and go. I gotta stop laughing. Knowledge and defense. Like, like if Luke would have fought the Emperor, it would have been out of anger. Mm -hmm. The Emperor was taunting him and wanted him to fight him, mm -hmm. to draw him to the dark side. Luke yeah. recognized this because that's what Vader was trying to do to him. Mm -hmm. And he succumbed to it to the point where he was using his anger Right. Like he, he, he watched that throne room scene. He's like wailing on Vader, like like he's swinging it like a damn baseball bat at, at his arm to like, cuts it off. And then he realizes, my God, this is where I'm going because I, you know, I'm missing my arm too. Like it just kind of it snapped him out of that rage. And yeah. Palpatine's purpose was to draw him back into that rage to turn him to the dark side. Luke mm -hmm. recognized that and said, No, I'm not, I would rather die. Right. Then, then be a servant to the dark side, and that's not being passive. That is being fully aware of where you're going, going, and not crossing that line. And in a way, that that was a brilliant, I guess you can say, mental defeat against Emperor Palpatine because they were playing, they were doing mental mental games with each other back and forth. Luke was more positive on the mental um, of redeeming his father, while his father and um, um, the Emperor were playing that mental. Um, mental piece of you know trying to make him turn and stuff and vader basically used that against him he used his sister against him so he went out with you know fear and anger he knew exactly what would happen if you know he didn't defeat or if he was killed there and he went after leia so he also went out to protect her but because he was so overdrawn in the fear in the anger all that stuff he was starting to teeter and cross to the dark side and um once he gained control, like you said, that's when he he became more stronger, I guess you can say, in the light side. I guess you can say if you want to go into that aspect, he came, he was in more control, and the Emperor didn't want him to be in control whatsoever. Yeah. Well, like, look, if the Emperor just wanted to kill Luke, he wouldn't have, like, given him, given him his lightsaber. 
Right, <laughs> right. Like Luke was Luke. Luke went to the Emperor like in cuffs and and disarmed. Right. <laughs> like, Palpatine could have just chopped his head off right there. Just told Vader to chop his head off. His yep. his purpose was to make Luke his new powerful apprentice. Right. right. Something that he wanted out of Anakin, but didn't get because. Uh, you know, of what happened on Mustafar. So, right. like, there's there's that whole purpose of it. And this guy is exactly the kind of person that Star Wars absolutely does not need. What he's literally saying is, like, instead of that emotional moment mm -hmm. and that moment of peace and everything, he's like, well, it would have been better if he would have gotten a cool lightsaber fight. <laughs> Like that's the kind of dipshit who sees fucking Mandalorians flying around in jetpacks, pinging laser shots off each other's fucking armor, and goes, "Yay, Star Wars!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like that's the worst Star Wars fan. Like, don't cater to those fucking people. That's that's why you get such dumb writing because you're <laughs> you're encouraging it and you're letting them get away with it. Yeah. And, and dumb writers, dumb purposeless writers. action sequences. And the, and, the, and the sad thing is that, and I've been in this conversation today a little bit, you guys might have seen it, but people take this throne room scene with Luke fighting Vader, Vader pressing him to make him cross um, the dark side by using Leia, compare it to The Last Jedi, um, Luke going after mm -hmm. Kylo Ren, saying that they're the exact same theme, you know, <laughs> literally they're the exact same sequence are the exact same theme mm -hmm. and i'm like the, the context the themes are totally different because you have luke who's fighting against becoming dark and trying to save his father versus him and he should learn he learned his lessons from visions of the future of looking into the future and stuff and not responding to them that was his lesson in empire strikes back because even yoda's like if you go blah 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 you know you don't trust the vision i'm, I'm being i'm paraphrasing you don't trust those visions because they're not always true there's different versions of them and um you know luke went anyways and he had to learn he lost his arm right he lost his wrist and then um and then of course in the in the last jedi not the last yeah in the last jedi you know his his thinking was i'm gonna go and kill this boy my nephew which he would never do anyways um because i seen what he what was going on in his head and I'm going to act rash. And that Luke learned all of that and learned control not to do that at all. Well, and yeah. the uh, the and other that's... thing, though, that, that makes TLJ stand out so much more than our, our, you know, Return of the Jedi or like in comparison to Return of the Jedi. Vader was, you know, kind of an established <laughs> galaxy wide. Um, galactic mega murderer. Mm hmm. Right. So when when he's taunting Luke with with, you know, capturing and, and converting Leia, there's a lot more weight to it than like, oh, my nephew, who I've been training and like I've known since he was born, had a bad dream one night, mm -hmm. but never acted on anything like. Yeah. So like Luke's snap reaction to to anger at, at what Darth Vader is threatening was much more realistic because Vader would do it. Mm -hmm. Vader was certainly capable of doing it. Ben was just this, you know, was just a, a stupid kid. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, God, I saw like, you know, the, the king of all shitty Star Wars take that's Dan Central fuck face. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was saying something uh, on, on the lines of be like, well, no, like he, you know, he, he, he was never going to really do it. He just, you know, it was, ref it was just a reflex from the, the, he saw what Ben was dreaming about or whatever, or what he was going to be about. And it was like, he just turned on his lightsabers, like some sort of snap reflex to something horrifying. It's like, right. no, no, watch the movie again. And like, you know, cause TLJ like shows three different versions of what happened in that hut that night. But like mm -hmm. in, in, I think every one of them, like Luke is seriously contemplating cutting him down. It wasn't just like a, 
shit, mm-hmm. something startled me. I'm going to turn my lightsaber on in self-defense. Like, well, then see, and right. that's the thing. Jedi learn control. They control their emotions. They control their reactions. And it's also, it's not very Jedi. They control it's their like, nut, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and then they, um, they also... Um, Jedi don't um, go after unarmed people. That's not the Jedi way. But I did uncover, I have to find the article again, but there's an article where Ryan Johnson confirms that Luke was really intending to kill Ben. I think it's pretty clear to anybody who watches the thing. It's just yeah. like so many TLJ fans like just reach to such ridiculous levels to try and like explain or come up with some like, uh, you know, ooh, this is an allegory, or like, ooh, this there's hidden meaning here. It's like, listen to Ryan Johnson talk. He's yeah. like a fourteen year old boy. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like none of like none of the well, shit he was doing was nuanced on that kind of level. Like, it, 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 it's it's an retarded. edgelord thing. It's an edgelord. Like, ooh, they did something different with Star Wars, mm-hmm. and I'm yeah. gonna like it so that I can look like I'm cool because. You know, it's so it's so uh, contrarian to what Star Wars really is, and they did something different. And then, uh, you know, the reason we hate TROS versus the reason they do are very different reasons. We hate it because, you know, it's a garbage movie, and plus they broke lore, and it continues the story that, that broke lore and all that, but they hate it because it didn't continue the Edgelord stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why they don't like it. Like, yeah. oh, you yeah. know, they should have let Ryan make it or whatever. Yeah. Big, big difference there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's a good example of like, you know, we, we, like two people could have the same end opinion about something, but, you know, they approach it from the reasons behind it are just completely fucking different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, from a character po- point, they turned Luke completely into like from like the a para- like the character a paragon of good sort of thing, like the, the Jedi mm-hmm. is, but. And then they they wanted him in TLJ or at, at the end, I guess more TLJ than at the end of Force Awakens. They turned him completely into the flawed hero with like looking for a redemption arc, and mm-hmm. that's it was one way that was like that's probably the worst possible way you could have gone from Luke after Return of the Jedi. Like I, I'm not a new right. and- reader or anything, but that's huh. like you don't build him up so much in those movies to then just tear him down and have to rebuild him again kind of thing in the sequel mm-hmm. movies right. right you can have a care like like this is such like the the sequel lovers and defenders and and cheerleaders out there like always always like to present like these two false choices and yeah. it's either we get what we got with tlj or we have to get god mode superman superman flawless luke and they're just there's just no other way to write it we either what? it was tlj or god mode luke and because what they'll say is like you just want god mode luke mm-hmm. like you just want super powerful god mode luke and like no i didn't like but you could have the character struggle like he he fucking struggles in heir to the empire yeah he ain't no fucking god mode luke there yeah and Remember- even, like, even in the jedi academy trilogy Exar Kum basically knocks his shit out and puts him in a forced coma. Or remember the very, like, his very first fight, I think it was, in Heir to the Empire, where they're on uh, Bim. Bim, Bim Asari. Asari. Bim Asari, and, yeah. And, 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 yeah, and then the, the uh, Nogri had the Stokely spray sticks. Yeah. Like, you know, they were going to take him out with, you know, just some shit that sprayed cum all over you, basically. Like, <laughs> Like he he had an issue with that, so yeah. 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 He but just by didn't the time, walk in and own everybody, like right, was, yeah. And but like, twenty years later in the books, like he had you know developed and become a lot more stronger in the Grand Master. But you know, five years after ROTJ, he was still learning, and he didn't have anyone to teach him and stuff. So, mm-hmm. but yeah. like even if you scrap the entire EU and go like okay, we're which is dumb, but like even if you're gonna okay, we're gonna do it. Like yeah. You just you don't it you don't have the choice of like we have to make him this like worthless bum who wants to just die and 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 allow the galaxy to fa- fall into complete fucking darkness with Snoke and and you know the dark side version of Ben uh, running around with the, like and you know gives up the force and and all this other stuff like you could have the the character could have flaws. 
and struggles without that. Like you didn't have to do that, but they always present it as like, nope, that's the only two options. God mode Luke or TLJ Luke mm -hmm. can't have anything in between. It's impossible to write it. Yeah. Even though the EU Snoke. literally fucking wrote it. <laughs> Just that character of Snoke. It was like, you know, Force Awakens coming out. Oh, we got to have a big bad. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's make him this ugly guy and make his hologram like 20 times bigger than Kylo Ren. They didn't even know what they were doing with that character. It was mm -hmm. just like, make a really mean, evil looking guy. Yeah. And he came out of nowhere. He's Snoke. And the name, like, what a dumb name. Like, Smoke. Oh, okay. Let's just change the M to an N and it's Snoke. Yeah. Just stupid. <laughs> You know, you remember that they even admitted that they didn't have a direction of what they wanted to do, where they wanted to go with the Disney trilogy, um, trilogy anyways. You know, JJ said that, KK said that, RJ said that, you know, just everybody that was involved, you know, and even it was Looking confirmed the by, yeah, and it was even confirmed by George and Iger that they basically, any kind of idea and treatment that Lord George brought in, they dismissed because yeah. they wanted their creative freedom. Well, and here's the real kicker, Alora. They still don't. <laughs> right. They're they're still literally writing this shit season by season as they go, retconning their <laughs> own shit. Yeah. As right. they fucking go. Mm -hmm. Like, like there's so much evidence of it out there. You know, the latest being tomorrow Morrison's comments. Like, you know, if they had a plan, they could have told him right away, like, no, you're not gonna be in yeah. the Mandalorian season three. Yeah. But they, they obviously didn't have a plan. Yeah. You know, and, and, and Favreau's out there like, ah, I'm writing season four. And it's like, but you said in 2021 you were writing season four. Like, wow. Yeah. You're writing like 10 page scripts in crayon. How is this, how is this taking you like three years to write? Yeah, he yeah. lost all the napkins he wrote season four on. <laughs> Did you they say? Don't, they don't know. They know where they need to end up, and that's all that's all they know. Did you say Tamora Morrison? Yes. Now we won't go through the whole thing there, but <laughs> <laughs> man, that was fun. I'll never forget that. But let's move on to the next point here. Because yeah. we're making great we're making great points here. What'd you say? That was a that was a great night. That was it was it wasn't as good as the Indiana Jones um you know uh Germany guy music thing around the fire pit. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> you were mad at me for using that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna build my new fire pit in the next couple of months, so we'll have to we'll have to burn like Thrawn Alliances. I have a copy of it. That's Ooh. the one that like really plugs Galaxy's Edge. I mean, what a horrible book it was. Um, from a certain point of view, let's stipulate that Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader when he turned to the dark side. It's still hard to get around the sense Obi-Wan Kenobi's explanation sure felt like a big old lie at worst and a major omission at best when he initially explained what happened to Luke, even if it did set up one of the most memorable reveals in movie history. No, and I've said it a long time. Like, yeah, Obi Wan, like I, he, he lied to him. That was a lie. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it was. Now you could say, oh, he was lying for a good reason, but in my opinion, it's like, hey, no one's perfect, mm -hmm. and that was like a, a flaw of Obi Wan. Maybe he, maybe he took the wrong path, getting Luke to where he needed to be in training instead of telling him the truth that hey, this Darth Vader guy is your father. You know, maybe he should or shouldn't have done that, but I, I just I'm not a fan of lying, even if it's for for a quote unquote good reason. Yeah. But but it, it doesn't mean that it's he needed again, Luke to, to come with him. I think that's always been yeah, in my but, head. Like that's why he lied. But yeah. it didn't it didn't mess up Star Wars. That's the whole no. point. Right. Yeah. So and, that's the point. And I'll add on yeah, to the character you know, lied. Yeah. yeah. How does that like exactly? Yeah. yeah. He yeah, he did lie, and I'll add on to this and stuff that you know they have the explanation to why his he lied not from a certain point of view but explaining if we told you like you said if we told you 
that may have hindered your training. It may, have, may you may have gone to the dark side, you know, quicker or whatever that they were protecting him and that they were going to tell him eventually, which, yeah, that still is bad. But, um, you know, at least, you know, that was something that they used, um, whether it sounded nice or not. But it did yeah, not. Sparing him, from a, sparing him from a harsh truth. Really. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and and manipulating him to do what he wants to to yeah, some yeah. because like because Luke says right that like I want to go with you and and learn the ways of the Force like I want to be a Jedi like my father because Obi Wan didn't just say like omit that you know his father became Vader he said Vader killed him but like that your his father was a great Jedi right mm -hmm. or that yeah. he fought with him in the Clone Wars and he's like if he told him like yeah you're I, I trained your dad, um, here, here. and then he became this horrible, evil murderer. Luke would have been like, "Oh yeah." Would Luke have still been like, "Yeah, I want to be just like my dad." Right. Yeah. Oh, do I want to go and be trained by you? Mm -hmm. or, or yeah, or like you know, how about I? I'll, I'll just go get trained. I'll go train with him. I'll say like, I'll just call him up and say like, mm -hmm. "Dad, yo, it's me." Yeah. yeah. Right. And Vader would have been like, "Bullshit." Yeah, you're gonna be like, no, true. Like, look, my name is Skywalker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I live at the <laughs> anyway, Yeah, yeah. Anyway, dumb, dumb point. That one is easily disproven. Boba Fett, comic relief casualty. Nobody knew much about Boba Fett other than the fact that he had that way cool armor, which made him a figure of intrigue without much to go on, but. The way the bounty hunter was dispatched in Jedi, Jedi's, I should say, rescue sequence, the victim of an accidental action by a blinded Han Solo, still felt like an undignified, undignified end in the in the name of a cheap laugh. Later, requiring an elaborate explanation of how he escaped the Sarlacc pit to revive him, birthing that Disney Plus series and selling a whole bunch more toys. So, you're gonna base like the fact that what it what is it again? It ruined Star Wars. Hold on, it it messed, messed up, up Star Wars. Wars because of of the of the method of death for Boba Fett. Really? And I don't no, think they didn't. had too what much messed up trouble sorry, moving please. toys after Return yeah. of the Jedi. Boba yeah, no Fett shit. toys. No shit. Fuck it. Even like the Ewok Village is shit sold. Like yeah. everybody's been yeah. sour stuff. Like I, I, I was remember. in a conversation about that on that, Twitter about someone having the Ewok Village and all this other stuff and how much they enjoy it. My friend lived across the street from me, and like his his grandparents, like he had every fucking Star Wars toy. <laughs> Damn. Um, but Boba Fett was a nobody character in Return of the Jedi. The fact that they like they the reason they brought him back and then had to make this elaborate excuse for him right to to escape was from response to the fans who liked the character or were intrigued by like how cool he was and i've said before again like boba fett was a character that like the edge lord the wannabe ed lord uh, star yeah. wars is you know star wars isn't cool anymore and except for like this this bad guy i like him but if you like luke skywalker you're a dweeb you know, it was those guys that were like really big into Boba Fett at the time. <laughs> but like, if imagine they never brought him back, and he just died in the Sarlacc pit, and that was it. Like nobody would fucking care. Right. This would be they, they brought him back because people wanted like to his story to end, or they just wanted that story his his character to to continue because he you know oh, his armor looked cool and he had a jetpack. Mm -hmm. But like, right. if if Star Wars, like nothing ever was made from Star Wars again from Return of the Jedi, after Return of the Jedi, like this wouldn't even be an issue. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to bring him back; they chose to. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It, it wasn't like it, it wasn't a mistake in Return of the Jedi that that made them bring him back. It was the fact that you know they could make some money bringing him back. Yeah, and as far as like response. the book of Boba Fett being on that bullshit, sorry, like mm -hmm. that show was just garbage and all the way through because, I mean, honestly, Boba Fett's really not like it's and certainly what we've gotten in in the Disney version of Boba Fett, he's just not an mm -hmm. interesting character at all. Mm -hmm. He's right. an idiot. 
Well, yeah. Oh. It's bad when even the actor knows it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the actor who makes his money from playing the character, you know, like I'm sure he's doing other acting gigs, but like, you know, nothing that's going to pay like Star Wars and, you know, give him, you know, riches in promoting Star Wars stuff, doing the con circuit and all that stuff. Like, his character sucks. And he, <laughs> like, 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 he, he, uh, he murders Bib Fortuna, right? Yeah. Because he has this vision, that he wants. Yeah. He he wants to be a kinder, nicer crime lord. <laughs> yeah, that's that, you tough. know I like I like. Jabba rolled with fear. I will rule yeah. with respect. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to say it like you're like slurring because you're like you know fucking drunk. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Sorry, I am Boba. right now. Did I? Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, Boba. Like Boba Fett sucks. Like, like what they, <laughs> what, what they've done with Boba Fett sucks. Yeah. He wasn't. That wasn't Boba Fett. That was Buddy Fett. Yeah, we're talking about Disney Boba Boba Fett. So Boba Fett. If you <laughs> He's like mad. Boba He's Fett, mad. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, you're. I think that you're. You need to rethink your name here, <laughs> really, because the original Boba Fett is a lot better, a lot tougher, has a lot of, you know, um, I guess you could say a lot of power, um, you know, with his, how he carries himself and stuff and stuff, not this snorting the lizard. All right. Yeah. No, right, I yeah. don't care. I don't care what they did in the EU in my canon. Fucking Boba Fett died in the Sarlacc pit and that's the end of him. <laughs> No, he's like that's it, and he deserved it. And I hope he suffered because he was a little fucking cock sucking kid. Yeah, and if it, if it was, <laughs> I mean, this isn't chrono chronologically after, but if he was so, so ruined in Return of the Jedi, why was why did George use him as the basis of the clones, basically, or well, like Django Fett, and then create right. Boba Fett off that? Like, if yeah. the character was so ruined, he would have just not brought it back. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Beta fit. Beta oh, fit. <laughs> That's beta. Yeah. <laughs> Boba fraud. There's a lot of them. All right. So the last point here, the Emperor's End. And this is the one that really pisses people off, me off. The idea that Darth Vader would sacrifice himself to save Luke from the Emperor took a little getting used to on its own, although it did what? establish... It did establish the notion of redemption in Star Wars despite past bad acts. But given the extent of his powers, killing off the Emperor by simply throwing him down a cavernous Death Star shaft didn't yield the thrills or satisfaction that a more genuine battle would have created. Oh, you just wanted more lightsaber fucking battle. Yeah, there's yeah. another battle there. Moreover, yeah. moreover. Even if you buy that Palpatine was focused on Luke, his defensive skills def definitely left something to be desired, especially after seeing his epic showdown with Yoda in Revenge of the Sith. So what in the hell are you talking about? He thought he'd won as well. He's got Luke on the ropes. Like he's mm -hmm. he's not expecting it. Vader was down. Like he's not expecting anything. No. Vader yeah. just comes up behind well, him. He's like, he's lightning not... isn't like in the video games where you just hit a certain button on your fucking controller and it's just easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he was putting everything he had into like trying to fucking suck the life out of fucking Luke or zap the yeah. life out of Luke. All of his energy, his concentration, Vader gets up, goes behind him, you know, so he doesn't sense anything from Vader because he's concentrated on destroying Luke. And, um, and you know, and here, Vader had the prime example of... Right killing the emperor in any means so I mean, if you're looking I think, at it looks it looks like by vader picking him up in that way like it caused like a feedback kind of loop and he was end up kind of like sparking himself too yeah he he sacrificed himself for luke as well that was the total redemption right there because luke or anakin fell because of love but the love that the love of a um that got him was the attachment and the fear of losing whereas now he went through with unconditional love because he realized that he does have family still. And um, so he that was the biggest lesson he learned. And the one that made him feel like, you know, um, 
feel, you know, bring that attachment and stuff was um, Palpatine did feed that into him. Like you can save your wife. And he planted all those seeds in there. And finally he realized that you're the one who had, you know, you're the one, the cause of the death of my wife, me straining with my child or my wife. Now you're the one who's trying to kill my son. So there's that huge, diff, that huge overall arc that's happening there that this person does not realize, especially mm -hmm. with the other. So, yeah. And, you know, it's it's a bit foreshadowed by, like, the conversation they have on Andor. Mm -hmm. When yeah. he's like, you, yep. know, you know, it's too late for me, son. Like, yeah. like when you, you start to see Vader kind of crack. Yeah. It wasn't just, like, a snap decision out of the blue. Anakin's like, you know, or Vader's just like, uh, do I help him? Do I not? Flip it. Like, he's like Two-Face. He flips a coin and then he just, you know, up heads. I'm going to, I'm going to kill the Emperor now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like, the wrap of the wrap up of this article, we could go to Empire Strikes Back and we could contrive a bunch of reasons why it ruined like a new hope, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know, this and that. It's it it's stupid. Like that movie was huge, it was popular with good reason in nineteen eighty three because it had a lot of great moments. You know, people bring up the Ewoks and whatever, like it having Ewoks is not the equivalent of what they did in Disney Star Wars. It just isn't, oh, with time, people will come to accept them. No, they won't. Like, normal no, I people... still don't accept Ewoks. I think they were, <laughs> I, I don't think it was a good decision. Like, but, but the thing is with Return of the Some Jedi, like the arc, yes, Matt Wilkins, if you're out there, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, like, oh, you're crushing Matt's heart right now. <laughs> the, the thing for me about Return of the Jedi is that we get such a great, payoff with Luke and Vader in that throne room that while I like I roll my eyes a little bit at the the Ewoks like I I still like the movie because man did it pay it off mm -hmm. like we got the heroes and the good guys win the emperor is destroyed Vader turns back to the light Luke redeemed him. Like I, you know, as much as I don't like the Ewoks, like I can, I can overlook them as been like, well, okay, maybe if the Emperor didn't say my best troops were down there, or you know, yeah. or you know, oh, if they were just taller. But like you know, for me, the biggest thing with the Ewoks were just like the traps that they had conveniently set up for the the walkers. Like the, yeah, you know, like hey, we're gonna tie some logs up in a tree just in case some big mechanical thing comes by. Mm -hmm. Like though, I mean, yes, that's ridiculous. It's stupid, and like, I I say it's stupid, but like, it doesn't ruin the movie for me because again, that other part of it, that other segment of what's going on in the movie, had such a great payoff that I overlook it. Like, but I can like you know when I evaluate the movie as a whole, I overlook it. When I zero in on the Ewoks, I'd be like, yeah, that that wasn't great. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's a far cry from an entire movie based on ships running out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it being in a space um, space chase and you're barely going so much so fast because of that. Yeah, the low speed. And nobody chase can cut them off wanted. and go ahead, but the Millennium yeah. Falcon can come in and go out, and they can go to Canto Bite and come back and catch up, like. Well, if that's possible, then why couldn't like all of the uh, New Order ships just attack them with fighter pilot, regular right. fighter ships? Right. Exactly. I brought that up at the time years ago. Like that's just so dumb. Like mm -hmm. I'm sorry that like to me that's that's a lot worse than like oh the the little teddy bears tied up some trees and mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean, Ewoks? Which one destroy or which one do we like better, Timon? That's the question. Mm -hmm. So let's let's look at this. Let's look, let's look at the FCU. The fuck C three PO is the answer. Fuck you, fuck <laughs> you. The Ferloni Cinematic Universe. <laughs> this this stupid article, you know, talking about they're going to bring it all together, all that stuff. And these guys in all these interviews, it's so cringe. It's almost like you can tell they're uncomfortable with each other because obviously they're not the same type of guys, right? Mm -hmm. But 
somehow they work together and all that. It doesn't mean there's a civil war or whatever, but all these interviews they're giving are really cringe because you can tell that that they're, I don't know, they just don't have the same outlook and stuff. But yeah, the Furloney Cinematic Universe, that's where they're going with this. It's like, guys, you're years late to the party and Marvel's already done it. Does anyone even want this? To see Skeleton Crew, which nobody knows anything about, Ahsoka, Mandalorian people, and I guess Rebels people all come together. Like, it's so, at this point, cliched. Yeah. Does anyone even want to see it? <laughs> nope. nope. And it's a feature film. Like, is this going to bomb worse than Solo, a Star Wars story? There's no, I don't know. there's no one's talking about it either. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no hype. Yeah. So I think we're going to poss possibly see something that's going to beat Solo's record. Not in a good way either. Right. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> and all people are saying no in the chat. Not me. No, no. Yeah. Well, so. look at this paragraph. Favreau hints that it may not just be the characters and planets that pop up at pop up in the film a hint backed up like by lucasfilm chief kathleen kennedy who told ew that there are a lot of sources he's drawing from to see where we're going and it mm -hmm. seems like some of those sources could even be ones that are no longer considered canon you know the old line yeah when when i was younger we didn't have the movies but there were comic books there were novels Things that are encompassed in the expanded universe or legends, Favreau says. Clearly, there are decisions that have to be made to fit it all together. But for us, I think one thing we're in agreement about is that the characters, as special as they are, the story has to drive what characters are. So that's what they're going to do, like a bunch of member berries and all that. And then we'll get a bunch of weirdos on Twitter and wherever else saying, hey, they're giving you the EU and you don't like it. You're just a, a jealous hater. You're just a hater because you're not accepting the EU. It'll just be cherry picking the EU. Yeah. It's destroying it. It's bastardizing it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's all it is. Yeah. Like what you were saying, like all the results when you search for the things that they'll be talking about will come up with the Disney stuff instead of the old EU stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But that's what we're calling it, the FCU, the FAQ, the, the Furloni Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just going to be a bunch of animals screwing each other. <laughs> <laughs> Animal Farm 2.0. Banthas and dewbacks, you know, you get that cross phylum fetish, you know. Uh, well, yeah, rep I mean, reptiles like and mammals, you know. The furry cinematic universe. Yeah, <laughs> the FCU. <laughs> That's good. I like anytime I hear anything with cinematic universe, I instinctively now cringe because mm -hmm. it's just like, okay, everything's gonna have to all tie together, and like, I I'm so I'm so tired of it. Mm -hmm. Like like. It worked for Marvel for a time, but like it's not working now for Marvel. Yeah. Like understand that like there's an end point and when, when you reach that end point, you really don't have much more to go with. Like you don't there's not there's not anywhere to go to a after that. Mm -hmm. That that's gonna be as successful. Like it has an expiration date and for the cinematic for a cinematic universe, it's like not everything has to tie in together like like they're gonna spend half the movie trying to explain like how these fuckers all wound up together again right anyway right. like mm -hmm. or they're just gonna be like well they just happen to be there yeah Which i'm sure that's what felonial right and be like oh they just happen to be at the okay but look they're at the same bar yeah hey hera how's it how's it going you want to join our adventure sure <laughs> very contrived yeah mm -hmm. that's a way of looking at it so check this out do you know this feature like in a browser you right click translate to english bam it's in english isn't that cool you ever done that before mm -hmm. yeah 
Oh, okay. So I'm not groundbreaking here. <laughs> for, for Tim, he's like, oh, I'm deflated now. <laughs> oh, cl cl yeah, exactly. Cloneweb.net, they interviewed Timothy Zahn. And I, I'm going in blind here. I have not read this interview. I don't know anything about it. So I thought we could wing it a little bit. But I want to go back to 2020. My first real video on the channel was to call out Timothy Zahn's, uh, his state of being a sellout, you know, because there are quotes of him in 2015, whatever, 16, like, oh, you know, what they've done with, with uh, Star Wars, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly he changes his tune in May of, I think it was like 2015, 16. And then a few months later, guess what? They announced he's making a new novel, like a new Thrawn trilogy. Yay. So no wonder he changed his tune, right? Yeah. So I called this gig. out way back. Yeah. And then we have people this week trying to call it out. Well, guys, I was three years ahead of the curve. And I had probably 50 subs at the time. So mm -hmm. it's like, come on. Yeah. Anyway, here's what it says. Timothy, and some of this may be stunted because, again, it's translated by, by – uh, uh, the app here, I guess Brave or whatever translated it. Timothy Zahn was this weekend, see what I mean, of April 15th in Paris before going to QSA to Star Wars Generations. What the hell is that? The timing was perfect. We had just learned one of the characters he created, Admiral Thrawn, will have the features of Lars Mikkelsen in the future Ahsoka series. Man, this translation's bad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, during the Paris Fan Festival, he held a press conference hosted by Lucille Gallio, collect, collection director at Pockets Edition, to return to his journey. <laughs> this translation is awful. Um, I want to see what he said, though. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So he's talking about... way back in the day like in 1990 with at that time i was not thinking of writing star wars i liked movies but i never imagined it would be possible um i was writing generic science fiction at the time in my career man that's really great to refer to his own you know his own works as generic <laughs> wow i was writing on brand i was writing iga science fiction right it changed in the early 90s when my agent called me to tell me that Lucasfilm wanted to write a trilogy of a novel which will become the Black Crusade or Mad Jedi. What in the hell is this translation? Maybe that really is what they call it in France. Um, let's see. Lucasfilm. Well, imagine this Obama. article is like they translated what he said from English to their language and then you're running it through another translator English from their language back to English. So it's going to be right. like twice as butchered. Right, exactly. Yeah. I had a moment of panic. I wanted to write Star Wars stories, but I was able to capture the essence of Star Wars from movies. Without it, it will be the adventures of Han and Luke, but not the real Star Wars. Ooh, that's, there's the term, real Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It was intimidating, but I wanted to try. It seems to have worked. Um, let's see. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Zahn explains the origin of Thrawn. I wanted my character to be someone his men would follow out of loyalty, unlike Palpatine or Vader, who manipulate and use fear. Everyone is therefore ready to follow him. I was inspired by historic soldiers and must be added a touch of Sherlock Holmes for intelligence and the ability to deduct. And that's true because mm -hmm. I think I have like a, a meme or a picture out there of of Holmes and Watson and then Thrawn and Pelion because right. that dynamic is definitely there because if you read the Thrawn trilogy like Thrawn explains you know here's what I'm doing with the art just like Holmes would have to explain to Watson like hey you know here's yeah. how I figured it out right and every I time Pelion goes into his like his his like throne room or whatever he's yes. just like yes. baffled by like what he sees mm -hmm. yep and I like the one where they where they're at uh, Lando's latest planet, like Naklan, and the Lady Luck docks with the Millennium Falcon, and Thrawn's able to figure out who transferred to which ship, you know, just based on logic. 
that was a pretty cool scene watching him in the book, watching him break down like, okay, you know, it's it's Leia and Chewie, and they're going to head to Kashyyyk, you know, just, yeah, and it made sense. Out. Yeah, it made sense the way that he explained it. So yeah. let's mm-hmm. see here. Um, about Mara Jade. I want to get to the part where he talks about Disney Star Wars. Um, here it and is. Okay, before you go on. Fire away. He, he didn't even talk about like how George and company gave him Western games to connect the lore. Not in this interview, but he has in the past, right? Well, I know so that. This, I'm yes. pointing out the disingenuous, you know, right. comment that he's making here because he goes mm-hmm. to like it's not real Star Wars versus in the past that I worked with the company to link it to right. the, the, the continuity. Yep. And so You're right. this is where you find out, like, basically, he, he just, he's a sellout. Yeah. Not nope, doesn't find... sound unless I see it on my TV screen. <laughs> yeah. I'll find the interview where he, he talked about the, the West End Games books. Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. find it tomorrow in one of the old Lucasfilm or Star Wars insiders. Yeah. So here's where he talks about the current stuff. Lucasfilm wanted these new books to connect to Rebels. So I tried to make as many connections as possible. They gave me the scripts for the episode in advance so that I would know about the plot. For example, in the series, Governor Price, that's the chick with the bob cut, right? (laughs) Yes, I think so. Okay, fights against Sabine Wren. In the book, I developed the interest of the Imperial for combat. The goal is for everything to hold together. The second book takes place between seasons two and three. And the third takes place during a period of the series where it is left off, where it is off camera in season four. Um, He wrote Thrawn, blah, blah, blah. And then he says in Chicago during Star Wars Celebration, my editor offered me the project. But will Lucasfilm agree to let me make a story that takes place outside the galaxy? They had already accepted, in addition, everything that has been written about the Chiss civilization, including the work of the other... He's talking about that other trilogy where... What's it called? The Ascendancy Trilogy? I took the first book mm-hmm. off the shelf, and I flipped through it, and I read several pages. It was so boring. Yeah. Just like his new Thrawn books, they, they were just boring. Forget the fact that it's like lore-breaking. Uh-huh. It was just boring as fuck. It wasn't like the original Zahn. It wasn't right. his original writing. Well, then we'll go back to the um, Sherlock Holmes elements that he put between Thrawn and Pelion. It's not there anymore. Yeah. It's not. So his genius is not showcased as it used to be, as it was. You can't, you know, you can't, you know, um, he can't bring back light. You know, what is it called? What's that saying again? You can't, sh- or lightning can't strike this in the same place twice or whatever i don't know but anyway he um he can't strike it again he can't strike gold again it's like he already written the true character of thrawn and it exists in george lucas era now he is reinventing thrawn which myself too you i pointed out around the same time as you did about how this isn't the true thrawn that um and people could say oh well he still kept it true that you can combined these trilogies that he's making to the previous ones no you can't because his the sum of his experience is what makes him who he is as well they're completely different yep you know between the two lores yep so here's what he says about feloni um let's see (laughs) the danger is that the writers write it badly Mm -hmm. he is a tactician always ahead of his enemies. Dave Filoni showed Rebels that he understood the character. Oh, yeah. Like when he's wrapped up in in tentacles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And like, um, he's Gargamel, right? Every episode, like, being defeated and stuff. That never happened in the novels. Yeah. he get defeated? Yeah, but not like every single battle. Yeah. And then I'll point out to you, because he was big on... Um, being aware and having defenses against like um, species and um, other threats out there, because that was his whole premise there was um, helping his people fight against the, you know, the, um, 
you know, basically the Vong, I guess you could say, and all the other ones that are a threat out there in the um, unknown regions. So applying that logic and his his keenness and his tactical brilliance to the Disney one, he would have been prepared to um, to fight against that purple, whatever that name that 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 sea that space creature is. He would have been prepared for that. Right. You know, so this is where the brilliance goes away. Yep. He goes on, so I think everything will be fine as long as Filoni and John Favreau stay in control. And I am, of course, available to help them if necessary. Yeah, right. Like they're going to actually reach out. Are you kidding me? Hell no, they're not going to. They've done their own damn thing. Like even the damn Ahsoka novel that that Rhino or whoever likes to bitch about, you know, the fact that they, they didn't adhere to it. It's Disney lore. Like mm-hmm. they didn't even reach out to who, who wrote that? Was it, uh, God. who wrote the Ahsoka novel? It was, uh, Johnston or what are uh, EK? Yeah. The weirdo Johnston or whatever the name is, I think majorly yeah. weirdo, like yeah. the one that, that put like, you know, the period and all that stuff in the, in the, uh, <laughs> Amidala novels. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That weirdo. Yeah. Like they're going to reach out to him. They don't give a shit. Um, We only talked briefly about all this, but Dave promised to meet the writers and chat with them in the near near future. Yeah. Like his, like his word is any good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll call, I'll call you guys back and we'll meet about everything. You know, I want to get the lore right. Yeah. Right. He didn't give a shit. Are you kidding? He can't even get. He can't even. He can't even get his own. Not necessarily lore, but his own, like story consistent. (laughs) One episode to the next, much less any kind of lore. Right. (sighs) Yeah. What a dickhead. But yeah, again, Timothy Zahn. You know, he was saying all this stuff. Twenty fifteen, sixteen. I just don't know what to think about Disney Star Wars. And then, hey, we're going to give you a job. He's like, oh, man, this is the greatest thing ever. And I think out of nowhere. I think there was an interview that Matt Wilkins um, shared. And I went and pulled up that um, interview. And I wish I forgot to save it on my end. But basically, he was up there with a couple of others saying that they that um, that they will like like a reboot of all these novels and stuff will hurt the franchise. There's no reboot coming. This is right before the, before they sold and, um, and stuff like that. So they really, so at the time he was against the reboots, but now he's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, so diddly squad. He did what to Amidala? So she, EK Johnston is a lady that wrote books. <laughs> One of the Queen books, one of the Queen Amidala books. So the the royal palace on Thede had some kind of security system where if it sensed blood, an alarm would go off. So this girl got her period and the alarm went off. And then the wife of Captain Panaka like cucks him out and says, you should have known to, you know, have the alarm to account for that because it's a it's a girl and she gets her period. How fucking weird is that? Was and she then, that stinky and that like heavy flow that it set off the alarm? Oh, I'm serious. But I'm, not, I'm sorry, you guys, if I went that you. way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's so disgusting. It's like <laughs> That's where my, where my mind went because it's like seriously, like if a woman, when you're dear, when it's your time of the month, you see keep yourself clean, hygienic, all of that. So, what the hell was going on in that scene? <laughs> it makes you well, wonder. You can attract if, like, bears. You got to watch out. <laughs> it makes you wonder if if Ponda Baba's arm from the cantina. It's because he was like fisting like someone, but um, and then it just broke up. So. Here's you went there. Oh my God. So anyway, why why would he why would EK Johnston write that? Why would Alora say that? That's my question. No, but yeah. no, she wrote that and then she made a tweet 
and she has me blocked by the way um i don't know why or how probably a blockchain but she made a tweet ek johnson did that yay i got menstruation added to wikipedia yeah because of what she wrote that work yeah yeah she's a weirdo man that was probably her only goal going into the project yeah and here's what's hilarious and i'm not trying to be mean but if you look her up she's like she's like grotesque you know she just is so in one of the author blurbs a publisher said hey you know um ek johnston is an author and uh she writes books and she lives like here wherever the hell it was and she's like they put my town and they doxed me now people are gonna show up it's like honey ain't no one gonna show up to see you like trust me <laughs> you're safe like oh where who are these people that they're writing because you know you take zon 1990 he was a successful science fiction author he calls it generic wasn't generic he wrote good science fiction so they hired him they wouldn't have hired him if he didn't but now they get these random people like daniel jose older who was like an emt hey let's get this guy to write star wars and then he trolls people online and all that who are these people they're people that will work for cheap is who they are Mm -hmm. that's it zon probably doesn't work for cheap but really he's the only name that they have Maybe they have John Jackson Miller still, right? Holy shit. Did you just throw a cat? <laughs> no. no, I went to grab him and he leaped and left it all over some crap on the floor right there. Okay. <laughs> the cat thrower. He's pulling up. Uh, who is that? Alinity? You got in trouble for throwing the cat? Just trying to. <laughs> that is a weird thing to be proud about. And that's, they're all weird. None of yeah, them is- are like normal. All of them are weird. Like you look at the High Republic panels and all that <laughs> stuff that they had. Like they're weird. Here's one of them right here. Let me see if I can find it. You know which clip I'm looking for, right? Mm, I think so. I think you shared it before, right? I have it pretty high at the top because I was going to use it the other night, but I didn't. Uh, here it is. Thank you. Let's clap for diversity. Let's clap for diversity. Clap for diversity. What's her name? Justina <laughs> Ireland, I think. Holy shit. Thank you. Let's clap for diversity. <laughs> that was at celebration last year. Um, yeah, that's Justina Ireland, the racist. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. It's too many weird names to remember. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, but Timothy Zahn, like, I get it. You need to make a living or whatever, but I can tell you this. If they said, hey, Tim, you know, we found your channel. It's called Open Airlock Policy, and you know a lot about Star Wars. You make these lore videos. We're going to give you a retainer of 500 grand to write a a, uh, Star Wars book set in the new, new, jedi order era like raise new jedi order era you know whatever uh 500 grand you can write it i would say no (laughs) i would say no because it's not worth it to me to sell my soul Mm -hmm. to like ruin star wars but apparently to timothy's on it doesn't matter i would say yes but only if it's like in my contract that if they make it into a movie ryan johnson has to direct it (laughs) <laughs> why because of accelerationism yep <laughs> so explain to the chat so that they understand and they don't think you're a ryan johnson fan what what we mean by <laughs> accelerationism please uh, accelerationism is basically like in accepting of the the inevitability of the the complete decline of star wars and rather than have it just be the slow, long, arduous uh, descent into hell, like better to just get it over with, ruin it as fast as possible, and then put up, you know, so like nobody likes Star Wars anymore, and then put a pause on on the brand for a while, and then come back later at some point in time, 
like a decade later and then try and like rebuild it from the ashes because right. Disney's not going to sell it. So we're stuck with it. And like, if, if, if we're going to be stuck with it, then the only way up is down. Mm -hmm. We we have to, we have to plummet it into the pit. That's why I think that if Kathleen Kennedy does go, that Ryan Johnson deserves to be the uh, president of Lucasfilm and he deserves at least three, three trilogies. <laughs> yeah. And and honestly, and you know, so like there's a logic behind it. Like in order in order to to make it in order to revive Star Wars, we first have to completely destroy it. But the other part of it too is, you know, just some you know, the the, the very, you know, bitter side of me just wants to be like, all right, you can fucking have it. You can yep. have it, you fucking Raylo weirdo bastards and let just I, like it's gonna be shit and i'm just gonna en enjoy laughing at it bastards <laughs> yep so um does anyone know what's going on with this do you know what's going on with this blake what did they say i don't know i heard a little bit about it it's basically just the scarlett johansson appeared on well, from what I heard, Scarlett Johansson appeared on Gwyneth Paltrow's podcast or something, some show that she does. And they were talking about I, their experiences mm -hmm. way back on Iron Man 2, how there were like rumors that they hated each other and everything. They were saying that was all bullshit. But then they pretty much just ended it with the, they're both done with the MCU in, in pretty much all capacities currently and not really looking to go back to it anytime. Mm hmm. Well, I'm reading this right here as we talk, and it's not like she's being negative. She went on to add that the prequel film, I guess they're talking about the one for Disney+, Plus, made Natasha's death in Endgame more meaningful. I think she means she's done just because it was a 10-year commitment, and it's over now. Not because Disney's woke, and I'm walking away from it. Remember <laughs> oh, we certainly did not. Yeah. No, I didn't get any anything like that. We did like, a stream do, a couple do, of Do people like, think like that's what Chris Evans left too? Because yeah, no shit. Because he's, he's anti woke. Yeah, if we anything, did a, that's the reason he'd stay. Yeah, we yeah, did no a shit. We did a couple of streams in 2021 on on ScarJo and Marvel about comments she made, and we made the point. Not an ally. <laughs> exactly. It's not like she's saying this stuff because. You know, she's on our side. It's because, again, you, you look at this, and, and honestly, right here on the stream, guys, in living color, this is the first time I've looked at this and what she actually said. It was a 10-year commitment, and I'm sure she doesn't want to do anything like that again. She said, chapter is over. I kind of did all that I had to do. So this isn't some kind of thing where, oh, yeah, you know, um, I hate Marvel because they're woke and they ruin the character. No, she doesn't care. She's done because she's done. Because actors after a while get sick of playing characters. But yeah. here's the, here's, here's my cynical yeah. take on it. <laughs> no actor with an agent would ever say like, yeah, I would do it again. Like you always say like, nope, I'm not interested. So when they want you to come mm -hmm. back, you can demand more money. Yeah, exactly. That's eventually, Tamar. what's going to probably happen with our bus that's in. The, yeah, that's what I said. If there's more money involved, she'll come back. She ain't done. Yeah, it's a negotiation. No one's ever, no one's ever like, really. I'm gone. not interested in coming back. You, you'd have mm -hmm. like, and so you immediately get the you get the studio thinking like, all right, we will get her back, but now like it's going to cost us more. Get her from so the like, back. Yeah, you know we're going to have to put more on the table. Than right. you know what we otherwise would have just to bring her back if right. if they wanted to, and that's what all these people like you know like oh Robert Downey Jr. is leaving and then he does like two Spider Man movies yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and she's dead in the universe anyway I don't I don't see them scrambling yeah. to get her back especially <laughs> after the lawsuit stuff that happened with her in 2021 with the Black Widow and everything but I don't see them really caring 
to follow Help that. Help me remember, did she thread. die in the scene where uh, Red Skull was on the cliff and all that? Like, Yeah, that yeah getting okay. the soul stone. Okay. Yeah, it's. I saw that movie once, never watched it again. So, hey, Grandmaster Chris is in the house, member of the channel. What's going on? Um, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> he's never coming back until he's back every year. Yeah. Well, now, now you know they own UFC or UFC and WWE are in the same company, or they will be as soon as the deal is finalized. So, what the hell does that look like? But, um, yeah, I just wanted to go over that because over the last couple of years with ScarJo, we've kind of followed that that story. And I think there's a couple of other actors out there and writers like, uh, what's her name? Um, J.K. Rowling, right? Is she an ally? Mm-hmm. Nope. When, w- uh-uh. when it suits she is, whichever month right. she said something that pisses off whatever That side. time of the year, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, here, here's another. We so, need to justify, you know, buying, buying a video game. Yeah. Well, here's another one. I saw a tweet out there about a week ago, and it was it was like a, a leftist, and they said, "I this weekend I'm going to go drink Bud Light. I'm going to use Maybelline. I'm going to do this and that." Two other companies that were woke, and I'm like, "Wow," because that sounds like our side saying they're going to go buy Hogwarts Legacy. Right, yeah. like I'll show them, you know, like how, how stupid, mm-hmm. like it's it's just dumb, guys. Like buying a game, supporting probably a woke developer, and then the author that's woke, just because she agrees with you on one thing, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry. Well, it's weird when you're directly supporting the game born of hogwarts you know what's awesome it's sorry to cut you off sorry lethal lethal like hardcore going after those people about a month ago yeah that that was Mm -hmm. i'm retweeting all of his shit i'm like retweet i'm just gonna retweet it because he's exactly right you know and he's a gamer right and he's calling that shit out so Mm -hmm. yeah well all the money goes to warner brothers in the same almost they were praising hogwarts legacy and for doing everything they're doing with Warner Brothers and everything, the same sentence they were yeah. destroying Velma from the same people. <laughs> Velma, mm-hmm. the Velma law. Yeah. So I heard that Jedi Survivor has a major bug or performance problem right. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Special right hilarious. Like, just great, hilarious. Yes. Disney Star Wars Survivor. Yeah, for, uh, the. Uh, number one Disney uh, shill, Raging Rhino, was meant to play it last night. Uh-huh. So, yeah, <laughs> he said that at the end. I'm like, Rhino, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Play some like mm-hmm. dark forces, like Melvin was playing. Yeah. That he ended uh, up. My being favorite thing. He need an update. Harry Poor. <laughs> my favorite thing with Jedi Survivor was like, you know, like Star Wars theory posts this thing and be like, well, I'm playing it, and like, here are my specs, and he's like, he's running an Nvidia 4090. Uh, what it, does that you know, mean? with like 20, it's the most expensive, newest NVIDIA graphics card. Okay. Yeah. In the background, he's launching NASA shuttles with it. Yeah. Like, and, and he's, and he's got like a, a thread ripper, <laughs> 24 core AMD processor with like 120 some gigs of RAM. He's like, eh, I'm, it's fine for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're running like the top of the line fucking gear because, like, you know, you, oh, you, you make millions on YouTube. You should have a fucking, you know, kick ass computer. Like, all right, I, I would laugh at you if you didn't. But. This is all right. This is the last thing we're going to talk about. And that ties into it, what you just said. And then we got to wrap up because we've been going three yeah. hours. So, yeah, sort of. So, that guy that, what what's his name? Like, stuttering steve or whatever the hell that account was Mm -hmm. he came out and said oh i want to have a a panel about you know people who don't like the direction of star wars under disney and then hey again i'm flattered people people uh you know tagged me they tagged you they even tagged tuscan bob right you know yeah like hey several people like think like nobody would tag greg wow no but you 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 know, you don't have like the the oh. what do you want to call it the 
deep cut knowledge that we do, but you are able to look at it and say, Hey, you know, here, here's my take based on, you know, the movie aspect of it and you get it right. So I, I can see well, and just the logical and character aspects of it. Right. Like, like you don't need to have deep cut Lord to, to beat the shit out exactly. of the direction of Disney. Exactly. But they're tagging people like that just, in my opinion, really don't know anything other mm -hmm. than this perception that, hey, this is like a Star Wars channel or whatever. It's like, yeah. what what kind of conversation do you think you're going to have with some of these people? Like, I think Theory was one of them. Like, again, he makes theories because he really doesn't know the real stuff. Like, he doesn't really know the characters. Look at the motivations of Luke and Vader in Return of the Jedi. He wouldn't be able to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's my theory that, you know... Uh, Palpatine said this because of this and that. No, you're you're just making stuff up instead of researching and actually understanding the lore. Um, so I was a little, I don't want to say surprised because I'm not surprised, but just shaking my head at some of the people they tagged along with our names. Yeah, I, I got say. tagged so many times on that thread there. And um, I, I'm very suspicious in that kind of talk too because it, like I've seen people be baited in and like, Oh, come in and for a discussion, you know, even though you're opposing view, come in and then they get ganged upon and stuff. And I don't think it's constructive. You can see and hear and listen to me on my channel, Twitter, exactly. What um, how I don't care for the direction of Disney Star Wars and stuff. Um, you know, there's no need to really showcase me because I already have people come into my channel. Right. And here's the thing, like. All it is is like, oh, let's showcase your debating skills or whatever. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's, let me, let me explain this. Like for me, you know, I'm a professional negotiator, right? Right. That's how I make a living, but I still don't want to do it because that's not how I negotiate. Um, you don't go in there and, all right, let's bully our way into this. You take all, all your, your, your leverage and everything in your toolkit and you take it to the argument you take it to the negotiation this situation here you don't know what they're going to throw at you it's like they could come out with some odd ad hom like hey you don't like this because of this well i'm going to yell back at you and like no yeah. i'm not i'm not into that that's stupid mm -hmm. again watch my lore videos watch my videos about why we shouldn't spend money with hollywood and mm -hmm. criticizing disney it's all out there you know my opinion I don't want to get on there and have a conversation about it. Now, if you want to get on to an expanded university stream with me and learn like, Hey, go on a stream with Tim and ask me questions. And I, yeah. I can explain to you what real star Wars is. We can do that, but I'm not going to get on there and debate. There's no advantage. There's no upside for me in that or for you or for anyone no. else. So right. no, well, the other side is it. like I don't want to I don't want to be in an environment where the people that are on my side of the debate are just going to shout meaningless bumper sticker slogans from Yeehaw. the last five years worth of videos. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's woke! It's wow, wham and power, and you know that kind of crap. Wham and power. Yeah. It's not even an argument. Yeah. I mean, like you could suspect that that's the reason why they made poor decisions, but like, <laughs> let's talk about the poor decisions they made as far as storytelling, you know, script right. and character development. Not lunch work. Yeah. The MCU. Yeah, yeah like so... that kind of, I'm so <laughs> over those kind of arguments. It's, it... Yeah. I like the one we did on. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. I was like, there's no logic behind that because it makes you sound very immature and you don't have a good standing yeah. point and theory to back yourself up. So if you miss it's like, it, it's what like we Hannity. It's like you're arguing like Hannity. Oh, did you hear about Hannity? His ratings are going down ever since Tucker was kicked off. Because yeah, of he doesn't have he doesn't have the lead in. The lead in, yeah. The overflow. So Yeah. Um What was I gonna say? You're a great American. <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to say. Okay. Anyway, yeah, but we we got to wrap it up. We've been going three hours. So Blake has posted the link. So really quickly, let's go around here. Like, Alora, are you doing anything this weekend? Um, Not much. Just chilling and getting ready for guests. I have my sister and my niece coming in Tuesday. So we'll have some family visiting from the Midwest. 
Okay. So I'm excited. And um, yeah, so this weekend, nothing really much going on. And then my channel schedule, I think I'm still going to do calf chat. So stay tuned for that because I'm going to have guests. I don't know what we're doing Thursday and they're in the Midwest. So their schedule is going to be different than mine. So they might be awake during that time. So we'll see. So keep posted on that. So, yeah. Are you going to, are you going to talk to them about star Wars at all? Probably. We're probably going to watch star Wars probably and just kick back and veg out and BS and wow. stuff like that. Yeah. Hey, could you get that thing off your shelf behind you? Cause I'm going to get, I'm going to get something. Which one? That star Wars one. I don't know what he's talking about. There's a lot of things on my shelves back there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You're going to see me in my pajamas. I have mine on, too. Um, but this this thing, guys, there's a switch on it somewhere. Hold on. I don't have mine plugged. I have to put the light bulb in here. I haven't done that yet. I have it. Oh, here it is. You can't even tell because there's a light in here. Let me turn it off and see if you can tell the difference. Oh, we can. I can, yeah. Oh yeah, yours you can see the glow. Mine, I don't have it all set up yet. Here, let me turn off my my keyboard tray light. All right, let me try it again. <laughs> there it is. Ready? It's gonna go on now. It's off. Now. <laughs> like how it's fading, like the yeah. breath. Anyway, the crawl. <laughs> That's funny that we both have this. This yeah. was a gift. Yeah. I didn't give Disney Star Wars money intentionally. Yeah, this was a gift um. too. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That's how that's how sensitive we are about it. All right, Blake, what when are you going to do these movie streams, man? Oh, I've got them planned. I just got to I'm having still having issues with my email and getting the actual stream yards like um, that code you have to get to log in. Okay. But, um, yeah, I've got uh, two planned, two movie ones, Signs and uh, The Frighteners. And I was going to do Maverick because I was in a bit of a Western mood. But then I yes. decided that um, I'm actually going to do what I've been th saying I'm going to do for ages is the top five or the favorite five lists. But I'm going to break it up into Westerns uh, pre-1980 yes. favorite five and post-1980 yes. favorite five. Let me know if I can be on that one because I love Westerns. Sure. I got but Western yeah, that'd be one I'd, I'd be right happy to bring guests here. in as well. Oh, that yeah. sounds like fun. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Um, and then we've got a, it's May pretty much Monday. It'll be May. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've got to schedule the master and commander, the far side of the world stream. Yeah. Watch I've got Martin. a, um, my special edition DVD is coming because it's, uh, too hard to find on Blu-ray and all the Blu-ray, uh, None of the special, a lot of the special features that were in the two disc DVD didn't port over to the Blu ray. So I've I tracked down a uh, special edition DVD. So I'm going to well, go through all the special features. We all have to watch the same version on the watch party with the audience and all that, right? Um, oh, yeah. But I want to see all the special features and everything and listen to the director's commentary beforehand. Yeah. Well, I'm ready for that because I haven't seen that movie in about two years. I probably watched it like 30, 40 times in my life, but um, can't wait to do it, especially so we can explain some of the stuff to the... It's going to be fun, and I think Greg will like it. It's a total sausage fest, though. Like, they're the only women in the movie are when they, they uh, go into port in Brazil, and it's only like for a minute, so... I'm out. <laughs> Why you would wouldn't you rather work like in a madman environment? Yeah, but that's not what I want to watch. You'll you'll love it. What what do you got there, Laura? What's that? Oh no, this is just the book I just recently got in. This is the um, Star Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. The um, all the um, behind the scenes are like the art and stuff. Wow, I remember seeing that on the shelf back in the day. Yeah, so. you know. Yeah, so it has all the concept art, all of that. Nice. Very amazing. Yeah. Take some photos and, and post them. That would be great. I, yeah, I've been wanting to. So, But I've been just nerding through it lately. So, right. yeah. Um, Gregory, are you – what are you doing? Are you going to be on anyone else's streams or anything? Uh, no plans at this point. You're doing um, the – bring into focus this week wednesday right yes yes it's so. going to be good because in fact tonight 
when I got home from work, I got some KFC. By the way, try their new chicken sandwich and their new chicken nuggets. They're amazing, like almost as good as Chick-fil-A. Um, I, I uh, was eating that, and I was watching Mid-South Wrestling from 1981. So me and nice. Brad are going to talk about Mid-South and Hacksaw Jim Duggan because that's where he really came up before he went to WWF. And honestly, in 1981... In Louisiana, who would have thought it's better than at the time WWF in 1981 up in the New York area and Mid Atlantic and like the Southeast? It's it's every they're ahead of the curve in the Mid South. So can't wait to talk about that with Brad mm-hmm. and those guys. Those guys, man, they know so much about wrestling. It's like I know a lot, but like they know as much about that as we know about Star Wars. It's wow. freaking crazy some of the that shit that they know. Yeah, so yeah they're great guys. That was yeah. a lot of fun on that wrestling stream I was on with you and them. Yeah, and I, I've known them online since 2005, I want to say. And I, I met Brad when I went to Cincinnati for work because he's from Cleveland. And he drove over, went to dinner. And, I mean, we were talking for three hours, and it seemed like 30 minutes. And it's like, mm-hmm. I got to go back to my hotel because I got to wake up to go back into the – the office up there um the next day but yeah great guys known them a long time um so we're going to talk about that then the following month me and shad are going to talk about um like what his experience was as like an independent wrestler and stuff in kentucky so that should be good um but yeah what's next i guess yeah greg And I will be, I think week after next, we'll do grounds of expediency on a Wednesday night. We need to talk politics. There's a lot going on. Like, Mm -hmm. I want to talk about, uh, what's the guy's name that's getting a divorce? Steven Crowder. Did you see the video? Yeah. Like, I'm like, hey, that's a typical night at my house. So, I mean, (laughs) what's the big deal here? (laughs) It's it's a back and forth between a couple. Sometimes we say some shit to each other when we're, and it's, it's, it's common. People who think it's not common. I'm serious. Do you really, ha- are, are you really in a relationship? Because you're not going to always get right. along with your partner. Right. Your exactly. husband tell you that he's going to fuck you up. <laughs> no, I don't tell him I'm fuck him up. No I'm joking. <laughs> like I, like, yeah. Like, you know, it's a, it's a selective cut in my opinion of it. Though, yeah. It, it's it's very it's selective cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of a dick. So. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean he's abusive. We don't know if she was a no. complete, a complete uh, C like ten minutes before. I mean, we, we just don't know. Correct. Yeah, that's so, okay, and that's that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. Conclusion sure. I came to too. It's very, very clipped. We don't know, and basically, it's I, I don't care. I don't care. Let them settle this through court. Let them go through it. Um, if they're separating and really getting a divorce, let them go through it. Right. Do you see his tweet? today no. yeah i seen that too i i was following that a little bit too. he's he's like well you know uh well, i'm gonna file a, a motion for all the records to be released including like medical records including including um mental health records so he's like well people want to leak this stuff then i'm gonna i'm gonna have the judge Published like my wife's medical, my ex wife's medical records. Like, one dick move, two, like, no judge is going to sign that off. Like, you can, you can file motions. Like, I could, if I were in a court case, I could file a motion asking the judge to go fuck himself. Mm -hmm. Right. It it means nothing. You filed some paperwork, the judge is going to look at it and go, like, yeah, no, we're not going to release her private medical records because you want to get back at her for this other or thing. Medical re- or medical re- records about her private, right? <laughs> right, right. Like, I mean, that's just that's just stupid. Let's yeah. reverse it. Um, yeah, Dar Spamton, this is the link right here. Grounds of expediency based on a quote from the great Milton Friedman. S- sub to the channel, share it on all your platforms, and say, hey, Tim and Greg talk politics there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then Mowage, am I white, gentlemen? You're exactly right. Mowage. Anyway, yeah, that'll be fun to talk about. Um, but yeah, yeah lots going to go on in May, guys. It's going to be a busy May on the channel. 
and we're growing like off the treks Wednesday night. Did you check the views, Greg? It's going to hit 200 no. views. So that'll be like three off the treks that have hit 200. Whereas in the past, I think we got 200 once and it was like the hottest women of Star Trek. <laughs> that was a long time ago. That was a long so, time ago. Great. Well, great stream now. said that I would look like one of the characters. Yeah, you look like the uh, Mirror Universe uh, love interest of of, uh, of Kirk. Hmm. Hold on. Let me look it up. Marlena, Mon Marlena Monroe. Was that her name? That's a compliment. Greg? Well, I'm not saying it's not. I was just, I thought I, I'd never, you know, like I said, I'm very, very normy with it when it comes to um, Star Trek. So it's like, oh, okay. Hold on. Marlena Star Trek. What was the character's name? God, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, here it is. Hold on. Let me find the best one that matches. I mean, they're all pretty pretty good <laughs> matches to you, but here's one right here. And this is the Mirror Universe. You know what that is? It's like an alternate universe where everyone is, like, evil instead of nice, and the Federation is like an empire. Okay. Here it is. Hold on. Yeah. And this was, like, Kirk's love interest. Almost there looks like oh, there. Uh, I'm in my belly. I'm in my belly dance costume right there. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> Marlena Moreau. I, mm -hmm. I almost said it right. Um, Moreau. Yep, yep. Let's find one where they're. I think we're going to need to see her cosplay in that outfit in order to. Do yep. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, we got an action figure and. Wow. And then he goes back, right? And then she's like an actual real character, like in the mm -hmm. regular universe. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what a great episode. Anyway, guys, um, what else? No, is one thing I want to say about that last stream, like if you haven't seen that one, and like truth, I had, I had a couple spicy rants in that one. So, yeah, did you see the comments on the stream? No, go back and look at the comments. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, mm -hmm. and all, guys, all bad, I'm sure. Yeah, and subs are going up too. The spacing's getting more views, even mm -hmm. when we don't have guests. You know, we're we're trending upward slowly. Yeah. So we just got to wait for that moment where we just blow up. You know, it'll it'll yeah. happen. The alternative factory, like the most views ever on the last one I did on Sunday. Like I've never gotten that many views on an alternative factory. So we're trending upward. We've we've got to keep it up. What if That's are you going to show us something, show Laura? Are you no, just talking about it? You, you like the show? Yeah, the um, Sarah Connor Chronicles that you talked about on the alternative fact. Yeah, that is a great, you, great show. So, did you watch it because I said to, or had, had you already seen it? Oh, no, I've been a fan of that for years. Oh, yeah, I was, okay. I've got the Blu rays over there both seasons. Yeah, I've been a fan of that one since it came out. Bye, night. Good night. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, like, I'm trying to figure out which vessel or which um, manufacturing, major manufacturer I want to do for EU. Like, if you want to throw out any suggestions, Tim. Um, Carillion um, Engineering Corporation. Okay. CEC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't put my finger down on which one I want to do. Because if I lived in the Star Wars universe, I'd be Carillion. Yeah. Korean is such a badass place, and the 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 people there too, man. That that's a people that's a people of confidence right there. Like they don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. Like that. Like, yeah. Right here. Yeah. What's Australia of Star Wars? We got to figure that out. <laughs> Probably Tatooine. Yeah. <laughs> God, not Tatooine. <laughs> So, so, so it's really an Aboriginal then. It's not yeah, I was about to say that they're the Aborigines. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, we're just bullshitting here. Um, <laughs> we've got to get out of here, but what's next? Um, I guess your stream, Melora, is next, right? Yeah. No, no, my stream is Ring into Focus Wednesday okay. night. And who okay. knows, you might get a surprise alternative factory. Or you might get a surprise know. live um, stream from me, depending on like my mood and if I want to talk more oh, by the way, Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. 
-hmm. Another thing, my daughter went to the movies tonight to see Mario Brothers. Mm. And she got back and I said, okay, what was the score on the 10 scale? And she said 10 out of 10. And I'm like, that's impossible. Nothing's perfect. What's the real score? And she said 10 out of 10. So you know what I did? Mm -hmm. I picked up Mario Brothers from 91 and then the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. And I said, these are the ones you should watch. I brought her to her room. And she's like, I already watched those. I got them off the shelf like when I was 10 years old or something. So, mm -hmm. but I'm mad that she gave Hollywood money. <laughs> I'll figure out what her punishment is tomorrow. Um, <laughs> You're going to slave her tomorrow. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being yeah. here. It was awesome. Yes. Three hours, 15 minutes. Deuces. We'll see you Wednesday night on Ring Into Focus. Hold this one around in your head. Shooting a senior officer is an act of treason and mutiny. The penalty is spacing. They put you in an airlock, seal it, and open the space door. You spend the next five minutes chewing vacuum until your lungs turn inside out, your eyeballs freeze, and your heart explodes. It's the worst kind of death you can imagine. And when that day comes, I'll be there to push the button.